This is State of Decay 2, The Return of the Warlord. The Lizard Gang cult faces its greatest threat yet. After moving to Cascade Hills, they realise this town is owned by the dead. But not only do they have to defeat Lethal Zone, one of their own has turned against them. We're depressed, but not for much longer. We are in the stunning Cascade Hills, and it's time to set up our base in more and more distributing. And forgetting I got red talon equipment in the supply locker, this is the setup I've gone with. I got a double set of beds up top, because apparently my community don't like sleeping in the mud. We've got a maxed out modified command centre, which gives us six potential outposts to play with. We've got the built-in workshop for crafting incineraries, and an infirmary for sorting out all those runny nose and coughs I'll be having. we got the double farm combo, because apparently my community haven't learned to photosynthesis, and Finally, a fighting gym shooting range combo to turn these badasses into, well, even bigger badasses, I guess. But as of yet, things certainly aren't perfect. We really need ammo and fuel. So I head off to claim some outposts, but I'm almost certainly gonna have to take down a couple of play carts to make this doable. I'm driving on the left-hand side, because that's how you're supposed to drive. And after triggering 98% of the planet, we come across our first blood feral. Don't even worry me in the slightest, my friend. <laughs> After a quick bit of sightseeing, I spot my first target, a fuel outpost, and it's only claimed by one heart. Let's take it out. And I suppose it's fair to say nothing on this channel ever goes according to plan. Need to scope it out and figure out which window it is in, and there it is, baby. Although this heart was probably the most successful of the video. This is the tactic. Pop a stim, kick in the door, and smack the bitch up. Although I definitely should have brought a heavy weapon. And as trouble starts breaking through the window, that's my cue to skedaddle. Nope, nope, nope. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. At this point, you might be thinking, so far, so good, right? Other than the unnecessary roly police. With a sizable horde chasing me, I managed to lob a molly through the open window. Now I want to pop off a bloater grenade. But because of the crowd control, I'm unable to get the throw off before the flames dissipate. When I do release the gas, it's on the other side of the room. So the following explosion is too far from the heart. Um, I think I might have missed. Time to repeat the tactic. But unfortunately, I'm out of molly, so I'll have to replace the ignitable with pipe bombs. And unfortunately, I mess up the throw and get locked in an animation. Oh, shit, shit, shit. I managed to throw myself through a window and get off a pipe bomb. Did that do anything? I don't think it did. Oh, don't say that, mate. It certainly did something. I'm very low on health right now. Okay, so this has gone swimmingly, isn't it? So I climbed to the safety of my impaler, then put 66762 rounds into it. Well, it took a long time, but at least we got it. Now I just need to lead away the horde that's gathered so I can get back into my car. This way, zombies. That works out perfectly. Yep, we lost. Okay, two doors. Yep, no problem. I'm then able to claim our first outpost. And I think it's fair to say Loren has taken a bloody sizable beating. Maybe this would be a good time to use a medikit. Oh. Okay, no, it would not. So I decide to give Lorraine a rest. Let's take over his laser. She's cool. And with laser armed to the teeth, we do some more scouting and I spot my next target. You see, the next outpost I want is an ammo outpost, and that's claimed by two player carts. Although my next heart isn't one of those. That's alright, we'll consider it a warm up after the disaster that was the first one. Jump in the back, love. That's the efficient way of doing it. Have you seen how many zombies are around us? We always set up with the same cheese ball tactic by parking my driver's side door right by the window where the heart's located. But don't worry, that's not my main tactic. It's more of a backup plan for when everything goes horribly wrong. Crap, 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 crap. Yep, we messed up, chat. We messed up. After dodging my way through the crowd, I do the molly blotter cloud combo. But I'll be honest, I was expecting it to do more damage. So I decide to implement my backup plan. However, there's one major thing I failed to notice. Oh, Jesus. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, no. Not laser. However, panic is starting to set in as I try to heal myself. Oh shit, I just I just nuked myself. This was supposed to be a cocky video about how well I've been doing. Thankfully, the cloud dissipates and I'm able to cheat my way to another victory. Okay, there we go. We got a heart down. Woohoo! Only two more to go. Thankfully, this time I have an outpost close by that I can retreat back to. And thanks to update 33, I can turn this outpost into my safe space for the next three hours. But after all that damage, I'm obviously still changing characters. Let's take over as Gaz. <laughs> Maybe he can take down more than one play card. And I think the situation is starting to take its toll on the Lizard Gang cult. Might be the dumbest group of dum-dums alive. Deadheads included. Robert, you just always... Robert's always been a prick. Add him to the sacrifice list, chat. Hey, I'd sacrifice him right now if he wasn't my only bloody mechanic. And we tend to go through cars like the BBC goes through nonces. So I once again park tactically, headbutt my way through a double paned window, and smack that bitch up like I'm a 90s rapper. Yep, we got it. Of course we got hit. Of course we got hit. I understand it's pretty dark right now and you're probably struggling to see things. But let me just assure you that everything's going according to plan. Shit, shit, shit. Okay, great. Look, 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 look. We didn't mean for that to happen. Do you mean the third degree burns or the severe runny nose? And that's when it hits me. Oh yeah, I brought scent block. Why didn't I use that? 
way I can answer that one. And I'm absolutely certain the comment section's full of it right now. Oh, great, a juggernaut. Thankfully, I've at least learned to carry a player cure with me. I also take the center block. Not that is going to make a difference now. Then throw some firecrackers as a distraction. And I'm sure you'll agree this plan works out perfectly. Oh, shit. I guess I need to start carrying two cures on me. Just like that, we are, we have plague for the third time this video. We also have a plague feral and juggernaut chasing us down a narrow alleyway. So I use the ladder to climb to the safety of the roof. We need to come up with a plan here because we're three minutes away from death. We have a horde, a juggernaut and a feral just waiting for me at the bottom of the ladder. And my molotovs can only do so much. This has not gone well, is it? I would argue this has gone terribly. And I've taken too much plague damage to risk taking that ladder. So I decide to yeet myself off the roof. And surprisingly without taking any additional damage. Okay, we did it. Wow, who'd have thought jumping off a building would have gone that well? I then retreat back to my safe space. Oh, will you piss off? Who'd have thought a field of landmines would be my safe space? I cure myself of the disease that has ended civilization and head back in for round two. But at least this time I remembered to take the scent block. I phase it once with my axe. Get the you may be a bit over your head. Yeah, tell me about it, love. Let's lob the flare, because that's why everyone always tells me to throw fi Okay, that's not good. It bounced off a zombie's head. But at least I can use it for crowd control. That's where my arch nemesis rocks up. A plague feral. Can the feral still smell me on... Yes, it can. Yes, it can. I retreat and await its onslaught. Yeah, maybe it can't smell me. I enter that pub for the final fucking time and use a firecracker brought a blom combination to get the win. There we go. We got it, baby. We got it. I then scarper before the feral realizes it was me that caused all the chaos. And with the scent block still active, we move on to our fourth heart of the video. And this one being in the barn means my tactics are slightly different. I still got the stim active. I don't realize I'm running and start bashing the shit out of it. Okay, no, I haven't. Oh, shit. That's the bad time to run. Out, isn't it? I use my AK to thin out the crowd. You gotta love the preppers extended magazine. Spray and pay, bitch. I then retreat back to the car for what I hope will be an easy victory. I throw my molly to ignite the heart, but unfortunately I thumble my next input. Oh crap. I keep using the wrong thing. And all the fire is gone by the time I'm able to throw the blow to gas. But that's alright, I'm always stacked with incineraries. I got nothing to wa- Oh, for Christ's sake. That's alright, at least I still got plenty of AK ammo. I swear I'm not using this bad. Oh my god, what the fuck? If you blinked, you would have missed it. Everyone's least favourite crackhead comes running out of the shadows. And by the looks of it, smashed his face straight into my car. Jesus Christ. They're evolving. Well, apparently not quick enough to avoid a spiky boot. Or trunk, if you're American. We managed to cheese our way to victory, and we still have nine bullets remaining. Honestly, that's like half an army's worth. So I make my great escape, and rock up at this gun shop to turn it into an outpost. I claim it, then immediately upgrade it to level two. And after gathering some very basic supplies, I head next door to claim the fast food place as an outpost. And I also upgrade that to level two. Then after noticing an infesting hoarding roaching on my territory, I stick down more landmines. <laughs> I love those defences. Certainly makes it easier for idiots like me. The last thing I want to claim is a medical outpost. And I know there's one in this area, but it's claimed by a play cart. So I climb up higher than an abusive parent to try and find the toxic bastard. There's an abandoned clinic there. And a play cart right there. So if I want medical supplies, I'm going to have to get my hands dirty. Jesus Christ, dirtier than they already are. At this point, you could wipe them in dog shit and they'd come out cleaner. But this time it's different. We're going in stealthy and smart. Because we've learned our lesson, okay? We're high on scent block and Adderall, but that's our secret ingredient to getting shit done. And after phasing it with our heavy weapon, we whip out the molly bloater gas combination. Damn straight, son. We got the tactic. We know how to do it. Although there is a feral outside. And apparently they can see through scent block. But as the feral slams through the door, I go through the window. And seeing as we've gone this far, we might as well take out the last heart in this area. And with the scent block still active, this should be another easy victory. And you wouldn't bloody believe it, but it seems I've finally learnt my lesson. And the bloater gas molly combination once again gets my victory. There we go. Fan. Bloody tastic. Okay, great. Ferals. Um... We need to go back to that med center, please. But as I'm leaving, that feral decides to chase me. And disaster strikes while I try to take him out. That's my favorite door, you prick. Even though they're able to dodge a speeding car, it also sit there perfectly still and allow you to back over it. By the way, your favorite door should always be the one that protects you, especially from ferals. So maybe it did its job. I then get to the medical center, and after removing a couple of pests from the car park, I can claim it as my next outpost. And I also upgrade this one to level two. Upgrade, please. This will come in handy. Yes, I'm sure it will. But maybe I'm starting to get greedy. Building mats, building mats, building mats. Surely that's all I need now. I locate a site nearby, then claim it as my fifth outpost. 
outpost this video, as well as upgrading it to level 2. After that, I used my second safe space, also known as a field of landmines, to completely strip this area of all of its resources. I'm basically Victorian Britain without the hate crimes. I then celebrate my victory with a little firework display before running into a pack of plague ferals. So it's time to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge my way to another victory. I think I could fight them. Although, admittedly, I do have a slight advantage. Come on, you bastard. A slightly flammable advantage. Oh, look at that. Bang. Quick as fuck, innit? Uh, oh my god, I'm on fire. That was definitely explosive. I then realised I've been an utter moron. Oh, I haven't got the builder boon. I just realised I've made an incredible mess up. The majority of my influence is gone, and I've only got one spare slot for an outpost. Thankfully, I've still got enough to claim the water tower nearby. So I set off on the way home. Although maybe I should help out this stranger. Nah, fuck it. This is lethal zone. Everyone for themselves. After leaving Shelley for an almost certain death, I finally make it back home. And would you look at that? Home status? Cheerful. I think this has been a successful mission. But my reckless behaviour has cost us dearly. We are now out of plague cures and don't have enough samples to keep us going. We must survive for the next hour without any plague cure whatsoever, or my leader Loren will die. The mission is simple, stay alive. But my community is still moaning little bastards. What do you mean Jamie started to fight due to a low morale? Our morale is high! Well, it's, it's plus. Uh, you know, that's, that's a bonus, isn't it? Honestly, these lot are moany as fuck. Honestly, she's lucky that she's my surgeon. And it's quite hard to find medical professionals after the end of the world. Why is everybody so useful? I need some fucking cannon fodder, that's what I need. So I get to my first target, the cell tower. I don't want to be running around like a headless chicken. This mission will have the efficiency of an SAS hit squad. Oh look, they've all heard me instantly. So I'll be climbing as high as possible to get a lay of the land. Oh, there's also a neutral enclave. They're about to become a bitch. At this point, I realise exactly how much of a challenge I have on my hands. As this area has six sleeping play carts. I wake one, they all awake. Once one wakes up, we've got to kill them all. Otherwise, we're going to have hordes charging across the map to our guys up here. I wonder if I can put that enclave to good use. Some folks who have lived here for a while, they might be helpful. I wonder how useful they'll be. So I go to check them out. Is that a feral I hear already? Okay, great. It's a good thing they call me El Feral Hunter. Mainly because of my tendency to drop roly polies on the bitches. Thankfully, once again, Gunslinger comes in clutch. Where is it? Where is it? Got it. Let's immediately just sort of leave the car there, leave this massive horde that's chasing me directly to this enclave, which is apparently neutral. They're not about to be. I boot in their door and immediately demand to see their ways. But unfortunately, they've got nothing that'll help me on this quest. And maybe I should recruit one. I said I need a cannon fodder. But at that point, the horde I brought catches up to us, and they get a little busy. Understandable. It seems my new friends are in quite a serious predicament. Oh, I didn't even bring a heavy weapon. Seeing as I don't really want to be wasting any of my explosives right now. This, this, oh great. Why am I dicking about you? I decide to abandon my new friends and crack on without them. My first target is a bunker slash warehouse thing. There's a horde chasing me, there's a horde in front of me, and there's a horde inside the building. But as long as I've got bullets in my AK and caffeine in my veins, I will fight on. We definitely hit it. We definitely hit it. Ooh, okay. Interesting. I wasn't expecting it to die. Why is it why is it dying from one? I don't- Oh my god. I don't understand that. I jump in the car and it's time to use some cheesy tactics. The car is a very good refuge point. Worst case scenario, I can just jump on it. But the key to this strategy is all about the parking. I need to block the driver's side door so I can make a quick escape without the fear of getting ripped out. Unfortunately, I park it like my missus after six cans of Stella. No, I'm sorry. That was a joke. That's terrible of me. She'd never drink Stella and drive. She's more of a gin and tonic kind of girl. I run in and give it a big old smack. And once trouble turns up, it's time to dodge my way out of it. I then repeat my earlier strategy of bloat the bomb molly combination. But unfortunately, while waiting for the cloud to settle, I get bundied. Oh shit! Oh my god! No! No! I quickly escape through the back door like a dodgy curry. That is an issue, straight away. We are very close to infection. Instinctively, I try to climb onto the roof of my car, but it glitches out. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, 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 don't think so, don't think so. But gratefully, I'm able to take refuge on a broken down car nearby. Okay, we're on our second play cart, and you wouldn't believe how long we have remaining of this challenge. 52 minutes remaining, and I am a touch away from death. Okay, looks like we're going to be looking for a new leader soon. Ah, the of little faith. If you can't believe in yourself, then who the bloody hell is going to believe in you? I get to the roof of my car and unload an ungodly amount of bullets into the big bitch. Okay, I think it's on the ropes. Yeah, probably should be. But then design. Disaster strikes. Oh, what? But nothing will stop me from taking down this heart. Not even my own incompetence. Oh, no. 
Oh, that was close. I do need to lead them away from the car. And while I lead them away, I make sure to reload my massive machine gun. That's my last magazine. That is my last magazine. Well, the last magazine you'll ever have. I managed to get back to my car, and thanks to my genius parking strategy, I'm able to pull off with no issues. But I may have ditched it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm, uh, oh, there's a bloke today. Oh, my God. Things are getting dicey. It is an infestation already. Oh, my God. Right, let's just kill that feral, because that's going to be... That could become an issue. Thankfully, feral's a big on rear ending. Oh, my God. I can't believe how close we are to death already. I once again attempt to park it intelligently, but I probably shouldn't be taking an IQ test anytime soon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. But thanks to my telekinesis, I managed to write to myself properly. I'm pretty sure if I get pulled out, I am dead at this point. That will have to do, I guess. Thankfully, the horde that was chasing me earlier has seemed to lost interest. And while nothing is chasing me, I decided to take as much damage as I can with my many weapon. But danger is never too far behind. Problem is, I really need to be careful here, because if this squirts, I am... Fucked. Oh, great. Okay. No, we're, we're dead. We're dead. We're dead. This is a problem. That is that is an issue. I'm not going to lie to you. That is a bloody big issue. We have three minutes until our leader's dead. Oh, no, we don't because I have a plan for every eventuality. If we can take down these final three player cards, I think we can count this as a victory and save Loren. In for a penny. In for a bloody bad time, I guess. But we got to get a bloody big move on. I take down the feral. That twat. And escape in my impaler. I get to the location of the next heart with just under three minutes remaining. And at this point, there's no need to be stealthy. I smack in the door and dodge all the nearby zombies. And I start things off softly with a gentle little molly. And once that burns out, I follow it up with a bloater bomb molotov combination. And with it still going, I follow it up with a couple of pipe bombs. If you get touched, you're dead, mate. You're dead. And seeing as it still refuses to die, I climb onto my car and finish it off with my AK. One and a half minutes remaining. Thankfully, the next heart is right next door. And as I escape, I use the impaler to thin the hordes that have gathered. <laughs> Oh, this was a terrible idea. This was awful. I park up my car, and this time I'm not going to be able to cheese it. Not that I'd have the ammunition for that even if I wanted to. I stumble into the room and go full auto on the bitch. But disaster strikes. Fuck it, we don't need it. But it's certainly going to get hot in here. Okay, uh, oh no, Loren. Loren is dead. I take over his laser and repair the only car we've got left. And after locking and loading, I restart the timer and head on. I've watched the guide videos. I've read your comments. I've witnessed the great. The Brian Menards, the... the the others, I guess. But the advice always remains the same. Learn from your fucking mistakes. Admittedly, it's usually delivered in a more PG-friendly way. Friends are always good to have, though, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? I am too young and pretty to die! Now I'm less likely to save you. And I'm getting the feeling that she's overreacting a smidge as I just watched her run into that bathroom where there was one zombie. Are you absolutely fucking kidding me? If you hadn't guessed by now, this is the pisshead side quest and I'm gonna have to try and get her back to safety. Why are you running away from me? Oh, fucking hell, but that's never a good sign when you're saying that chasing a woman. Oh, especially when you chase her into a bloody bathroom, you fucking fruitcake. Shelly, will you stop moving around, you prick? She spends five minutes running around like a deranged puppy, but I finally get her to settle down and agree to take her hung over ass home and it's always great to know when the cannon fodder know their place they always love getting in the back and so far so good not a single risk of death so i drop her off with no issues and the only reward i get is 220 influence yeah i'm gonna do that and seeing as our new friends are in plague territory, I decide to help them out a bit. But first, I want to climb up to the top of this water tower to see exactly what kind of threat we're dealing with. I can't believe that. I can't believe Lauren's dead already. I always say his name with like a French spin on it. I don't know if that's correct. But let's be honest, I'm not going to be saying his name much anymore. Other than typing RIPs in the comment section. Let's not talk bad about the dead, is it? So I climb and scout, shake it all about, etc, etc. And there's only four plague arts in this area. Easy stuff. Further out and work our way in, that's what I say. Avoiding the horde that's gathered below, I get to my pickup truck. Please don't jump on the front. I completely forgot this car is not immune to frontal assault. Ah. The keys to a successful lethal run are all about making the right decisions at the right time. This was not one of those times. It's honestly, I'm not trying to get myself killed, I promise. <laughs> but like a 70s BBC presenter, I actually get away with it. As I'm driving towards my destination, someone else radios in asking for my assistance. Yeah, I'll give you a hand, mate. Let me just clear out this play cart, you know? Someone's got to do it. I remember if a job's worth doing is worth doing cheaper than your competition. How would I get this job again? Loren died, mate. Can you remember? I charge in and treat the heart like a Lizzo backup dancer. Amazed 
but nothing's sure yet. There's a feral outside, I'm pretty sure I've just seen it. And once it's phased, I retreat with a feral in tow. But nothing could beat an overpowered red talon agent with 30 bullets of 762. I make a quick dash to grab the bloater grenades from the boot of the car, because I'm an utter moron, and just jump into situations without considering the outcome. Right, napalm this bitch. Oh god, no, why did that lock that way? Well, there's a first time for everything. Snapping really bit me in the arse there. I can't believe I just napalmed the bloody petrol station I wasn't in. I am livid. Furious. I run back in and you'll notice I choose a different window each time. And that's because I'm trying to build up an immunity to glass shards. Anyway, that play card doesn't withstand my bombardment. Yep, there we go. Got him. We'll be back later to pick up the stuff. There's a stranger which needs my help up here. Sorry about this, mate, but I might be about to bring up like, the biggest horde you've ever seen. But he's like, nah, fuck that button teleports like 200 meters away. Why is Greg all the way over there all of a sudden? I swear he was just here. Am I gonna go find the knobhead? Honest to God. Against my better judgment, I go to check him out. How the fucking hell did you get up there, you prick? And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he wants to have a chat with me. But to be honest, I can see why. Oh, shit. I use Gunslinger to slow him down, but that drains all of my stamina. And with no stamina, I'm slower, so get hit. And I wish I could say it was only the one time. We've been hit again. We've been hit a third time. This is why stims are so important in lethal zone. They really do not bring enough. Hi, Greg. Would you like to come down here, mate? No. Because there's, like... All manner of nasty shit come in and we've got no way of conversing with you up there. Seeing as we have several nasty hordes heading in our direction. Right, we might have to abandon Greg. We might have to leave him. Not might, we absolutely bloody have to. Sayonara, Greggy boy. But it must be something I said. Because as I'm driving away, Greggy boy jumps down. Oh, he's been... Yeah, there's no walking out of that. See you later, Greg. Thankfully, the next heart is just around the corner. And after parking it in a cheese-like location, I charge in to smack it up. But another feral decides he wants to join the party. And I don't want to be rude, mate, but you weren't fucking invited. But he is adamant he wants to have a go. But my stamina drains quicker than the hope for humanity. And I've got no stims to allow me to dodge. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, we're about to lose another survivor. But the least I can do is shoot that goddamn crackhead. And I hope this can be a lesson to you all. If we hadn't have tried to help that stranger, we wouldn't have taken on that much infection from our fight with the feral. And maybe, just maybe, we could have escaped this encounter with our lives. But that's not very badass boss, bitch. And we've still got five long minutes to live. We are gonna end this heart together. With the power of Loren looking down on us. Oh, actually, looking up. There's no way in hell we're seeing that man at the pearly gates. I put shot after shot after shot into it. There's so much lead running through this heart. If it were to survive this encounter, it'd end up running the country in 30 years. I then lead the hordes away from my vehicle so I can make my escape. I pay Greg one final visit. But that's mainly just so I can call him a massive prick. I'm gonna go find myself a nice cliff top and watch the sunset. That would be a swell idea, pal, if it wasn't the middle of the fucking day and you had longer than two and a half minutes to live. I park up on the highest place I can, twat, and stare out at an ungrateful universe. And Laser's final act of decency is to stall all of her equipment in the boot. That way her friends won't have to hunt down her corpse if they're low on bloater grenades. So sad. And not only our leader has died, but our kick-ass red talon operative, Laser, is also on her way. Maybe Lethal Zone isn't designed to survive without play cures. Maybe I am just a noob, but with a minute remaining, there's a sudden sadness that comes over me. Two of our great characters are lost today, and it's so sad to see. You will be missed, Laser. You will be missed, Loren. But life is not precious because it lasts. Life is precious because it ends. R.I.P. Loren. R.I.P. Laser. Can I get an R.I.P. laser in the comment section? The mood around camp is low this morning. After the tragic demises of Laser and Loren, it's fair to say the team needs a pick-me-up. So Robert decides to go out and search for a war veteran sniper rifle. Although is it worth searching this before I... I think it might be. You know what, there's probably building materials in there. And we do need building materials, probably. I do find a rucksack of building materials, as well as a water cooler and some black and white DVDs. Say there, vehicle, I'll be right back. It's good to get your cardio in, you know what I mean? And after a quick unload, we head off once again. Thankfully this time with some play cures. So I arrive at the farm to search for the sniper gear. Why the hell would a world class sniper hide out in a barn? I suppose we'll find out. I search the barn, find three frags, three flashbangs and a note from his missus. And she's basically whinging saying that she really needs him. Jesus Christ love, you're sharing him with the military, not a bloody swingers party. Get over yourself man, he's trying to save the bloody world like. Sorry Felicia, I'm pretty sure Eagle Eye's dead. I don't find his sniper rifle but what I do find is six bullets. I don't 
exactly know what that proves, but hey, 200 influences, 200 influence. I then decide to visit the resting place of our former comrade. Don't take me the wrong way, the cult's not getting sentimental like. But before Laser took her final tumble, she stored all of her equipment in this pickup. Let me just clear out these knobheads first. And with those knobheads cleared, I transfer all the loot to the boot of my Vantito. Then we move on to the first thing you shouldn't do in Lethal Zone, get sentimental. Yes, I know I just said the cult's not getting sentimental. What can I say? I'm guessing Robert is bipolar or something. Why was there so many zombies in there? There was none in there earlier. I start bashing the shit out of the zombs. But when I hear the undeniable noise of a screamer projectile vomiting, it's time to rethink your original plan. I manage to pop his face off, then strangers ask for my assistance over the radio. Oh yeah, don't worry love, we'll get you, we'll get you. One second, let me just deal with these. I finish off the downed zombie and roll away before the approaching horde can set me on fire. Robert, what a beast, man. But unfortunately, the cult has run out of caffeinated beverages. And the only thing I've got for refilling my stamina bar is a pack of fridge raiders. I might not be able to microdose on methamphetamine, but what I can do is burn everything alive. I will not rest until every single one of you are dead and buried. And that's probably my greatest weakness. I just fight and fight and never know when the best time is to retreat. Oh, for Christ's sake, why do they just keep coming? Oh, no, 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 not that guy. Not him, not him, anyone but him. I haven't got Gunslinger. Okay, maybe that's a lie, I know exactly when to retreat. When I haven't got Gunslinger and a Feral decides to join the party. Hi, friend. Stay still. That's it. Good boy. Well, this is gonna have to be a flying visit, isn't it? All I wanted to do was to loot this play cart, and all it cost me was free mollies, free snacks, and a couple of rounds of 762. And after that flying visit, we hop in the van and move on. I try looting this unfinished house, but very quickly get overrun. Oh, for Christ's sake, they're literally everywhere! I've had enough of this world. Oh, God. Oh, for Christ's sake, where the freaking hell did you come from? I was saving these, but now I want you all to gather in one little pile for me. Well, took up some of them. At that point, I decide it's best to leave. But I do lose my driver's side door in the process. Then we move on to the next thing you shouldn't do in Lethal Zone. Help out strangers. I have ferals on me. Is that okay? Do you mind ferals? I personally, I'm not a big fan. Especially when I haven't got Gunslinger. And I've got the hand-to-eye coordination of a blind amputee. And that leads me on to the next thing you shouldn't do in Lethal Zone. Dick about after dark. I will get it. Wait, wait. Uh, hell, the problem is it's so dark in here. Why the hell? Oh, for Christ's sake. I've, I've wasted all my explosives now. The feral tackles me to the ground, but I'm able to weave my way out of it. I then take refuge on top of the van. Don't I love? I'll be with you momentarily, okay? I promise. <laughs> Although that is assuming this crowd of delinquents behaves themselves. I take out the annoying ass screamer, and then the feral. I gotta keep Rihanna alive. To do that, I gotta clear out the remaining zombies. So it's time to get to work. I jump down from the van and rush into the house to create a choke point. And that allows me to start thinning the hordes. But this house does have window access. See, this would be a fantastic time to have some Fucking Molotovs. I completely forgot I had frag grenades in the back of the van. Why did I not realise I had grenades? So it's time to save Brianna's life. So I frag her house to thin the horde. I then frag the horde that's chasing me before rushing round the back and making sure to close the door to at least slow him down a bit. I then use my final frag to free her from the crowd. Come on, love. Do you need to get out here? Come on, if you follow me, I can keep you alive. But instead, she doesn't come with me, she just starts waddling about a bit. I then hear the unmistakable groans of a juggernaut. We need to stay in this building if you want to remain alive. If you go outside, you're dead, love. All right, I can't, I can't save you against a juggernaut. But she refuses to heed my warnings. Brianna, no! Oh, she went outside. Oh, you. Freaking moron. Honest to God, what am I supposed to do? I've done everything I could to keep her alive, chat. So far, we failed terribly. So it's time to come up with a different strategy. I abandon one of my existing outposts, then go creeping around that unfinished house from earlier. And with there thankfully not being anything in here that wants to eat me, I claim it as an outpost. And even though I've only got four ammo resources, I create myself a minefield. And the sounds of zombies burst into flames all around me is like music to my ears. That's why I love Update 33. And seeing as Robert has done all he can, I swap out to Gaz. He's our last red talon. Gaz repairs the van, loots the entire petrol station from earlier, then makes his way over to the pissheads who we helped out previously. But I'll be honest, I'm not in the mood for alcoholic shenanigans. So I tell him to shove that still up their fucking asses. I then make my way over to a play cart that's in their neighbourhood to show them I'm still the boss of this town. The heart is located in a bathroom. It's tighter than the pockets of FSG, but that doesn't matter because Gaz is one agile boy. He can fight off the plague zombies that have entered the house while still 
batter in the heart with my heavy axe. Okay, pretty sure you're the juggernaut. It also seems Gaz is one kinky bastard. I managed to get the first phase out of the way while fighting off the approaching hordes. I then retreat to pop a bloat the grenade, but I'm not able to follow it up with a Molotov. Oh shit! No, 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 no! And by the time I fought my way to safety, the gas has already disappeared. There is a juggernaut around there, but it's okay. I've got plans for this. And that plan is a simple one. Finish the heart off and run like fuck. There's still a juggernaut here. I want to lead him away from the car. I'm even nice enough to break down the fences for the big brute. I then try leading the rest of the horde away before coming up with a contingency plan. Cleo fire support. Something that would have been incredibly useful in the previous episode. However, as discussed fairly regularly, I'm a complete and utter moron and completely forgot I had access to it. And it's at this point I'm fairly certain that Cleo fire support does not work on juggernauts. But that's alright, the original plan has been completed and I can run back to the van. But not before stealing as much as I can from the crusty dead shell in that house. I then take off in the van, then drop off all of my loot in my landmine fortified outpost. I then sit there for five with my horn on, just to make sure I really get my money's worth from these landmines. I then clear the infestation that's popped up right next to the dead but still full of loot play cards. But while I'm pinching all of its goodies, a horde decides to interrupt me. What a bunch of rude pricks, you know? I'm forced to retreat after being bitten, then burn the chasing hordes to the ground. Then after very quickly dropping off the rucksack in the van, head back in to finish my loot in. And that's when we hit our next thing we shouldn't do in Lethal Zone, become a greedy little bastard. Okay, hold on, no, 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 not gas. I fight them off and make my escape. But at least I've learnt my lesson and I'm carrying multiple play cures. But I refuse to be made a mug of. I get back inside and grab the painkillers. And at that point, the horde has caught up to me. And I know there's a bloater out there, so things are about to get very hot. But admittedly, with hindsight, that probably wasn't a brilliant idea. But now I'm at Molly, so we need to go. I then go back to my safe space to unload. And after refueling the essentials, I do the thing I said you shouldn't do earlier. Helping strangers. Right, there is a bloater right here. So let me just pop him quickly. Samuel has been hiding out in this library and he needs assistance tracking down his daughter. They got separated while escaping a refugee camp and call me soft all you like, but I'd really like to reunite them. I'm happy to do a good deed, but you know, you're gonna have to listen to every word that I say. Welcome to the cult. Usually with this mission, the kid is dead on arrival, but I refuse to let it happen this time. But when we arrive at the house, you can hear her screams come in from the inside. I hit the door harder than midlife depression, then try to clear the house with a firebomb. Oh shit! Oh god. I'm so sorry to your daughter. But a mixture of gunslinger and burning diesel refused to let that bitch die. Samuel thanks me for saving his daughter, even if the methods were unorthodox. They give me a book about craftsmanship for my troubles and head off into the night time. But something happens while deciding my next move. Oh, you frickin' morons, honest to god. When I said earlier I'd like to reunite them, I misspoke. I meant to say I'd like to reignite them. You give me my influence, it's uh, all down to you now to keep her alive. Bye guys. I basically said no takesy backsies, hasta la vista, son. Now it's time for Gaz to really show Lazen and Loren how to take down the bloody play cart. I park with my engine blocked, so nothing can jump on when I make my escape. I then get a couple of powerful hits in, while still managing to avoid the crowds. I don't quite get enough hits in to phase it, but right now I'm just amazed I haven't been bitten or even touched. Our boy Gaz is moving with the agility of a meffed up mountain lion. After leading the majority of the hordes outside, I finally phase the heart. Right, is that what I think it is? I don't know, it's too bloody dark to see. Without knowing for certain if it is a feather or not, I decide to play it safe and climb onto the roof of the van. But that's not how we're gonna finish this art. After jumping through another open window, I pop a bloater bomb, then follow it up with a thermite grenade. Nope, 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 oh my god. That should do some serious damage. The feral then decides to chase me down, but me and Gunslinger are an unbeatable combination. Oh my god, how is that thing not dead yet? And by thing, he doesn't mean gas. It, it can't be, have much health left. It has thermite grenade, as well as a bloater. I get one more big hit on it before the hordes catch up to me. I then decide I can't be arsed with this shit anymore and finish it off from the safety of the roof of my van. This fucking thing should learn how to fight. Damn straight they should. Actually, no, they shouldn't. Let's not do that. What are you doing, you nutter? And technically, the smart thing to do right now is just to run. But I'm a greedy little bastard, so instead lure the hordes away so I can creep back inside like a Santa Claus that's on a very different type of list. I fill my pockets with its loot, then get the hell out of Dodge. Then the next thing you shouldn't do in Lethal Zone, giving precious medical supplies to bloody strangers. And wherever I go, I always seem to bring large crowds with me. Honestly, it's like I'm a rap star, but I didn't have to pay any of these guys to come hang out with me. I give Johnny 
the medical supplies, then steal everything from the shed around the back. I'm calling finders keepers. It's not my fault they didn't think to search the local area. And after that, I can safely drive home. And to be honest, I think it's fair to say that was actually quite a successful night. Although when I get home, I do have to fight everybody's favourite smackhead. First one up is when you use guns in lethal zone. Honestly, at this point, I think I should get that phrase tattooed on my ass. Don't you know I'm the zombie slaying John Wick? Anyway, I transfer all of my goodies. But this shit isn't over yet. There's a juggernaut. He's enroaching on our territory. And in lethal zone, it's almost always more beneficial to run away from juggernauts. Unless you just happen to have some experimental drugs. We're basically some chemist blended Adderall and zombie guts. I think it's time to get some revenge. Oh, fuck. But hey, don't panic. That's what we got play cures for. Damn, that's a lot of medication. Z adrenaline pills basically give me infinite stamina for a couple of minutes. So I can infinitely dodge him without worry. Oh, shit. I've also got some soda can bombs. As well as a prepper's AK. But my main weapon is my agility. A powerhouse swing to the gut does decent damage. And as I dodge his counter attack, I lob a soda can bomb. But that's about as effective as popping plan P while in labour. Oh my god, I just double tapped RB too many times I've taken another play cure. I might be a moron. This epic battle goes on for hours. We trade blows like we're at a swingers party. Then in typical anticlimactic fashion, while I take out a nearby screamer, my community kill the juggernaut off screen. The pissheads have accepted that their quest to build a still is hopeless, and have asked if we'd be willing to take them in. And seeing as we've had a fair few positions open up recently, it's probably a fairly good idea. Jesus Christ, at this point our recruitment strategy is either alcoholic or red talon. If anyone knows how I can get an alcoholic red talon, that would really top off this community. <laughs> His name's Hooch and he's a freaking bartender. Of course you can join me. But there are no free rides in this cult. We're gonna have some tryouts to see exactly how good these guys are. They'll each have to successfully destroy a play cart, kill a freak of their choice, whilst also bringing back a sack of materials and a new weapon each. And as a group, they'll also have to supply a fresh set of wheels for us. But what they don't realise is there's only room for two. And first to step up to the plate is Hooch. He fancies himself a chemist, although he does have a low metabolism. But what I'm interested in is his ability as a moonshiner. Lucky for Hooch, he knew exactly where a car was nearby. And after he whips out his spanner and petrol, it's time to hit the road. If I take out the nearest plague heart, this should clear up. Good for you, Hooch. Good for you. As Hooch is first up to bat, he gets a choice of the entire map of play cards. Ah, well that's a handy one. Let's go with the usual strategy. But I didn't realise it wasn't an energy drink that I had equipped. Well, I just wasted my only flare. That could come back to bite me on the ass later. I run in and smack the thing with my heavy spiky stick before having to dodge back to safety when the hordes get too much. But even though Hooch has 20% less stamina than regular folk, he doesn't let that slow him down in the slightest. There's several hordes on our location, but it doesn't matter how many zombies are about, Hooch is getting that first phase out of the way. And you'll notice we haven't taken a smidge of plague damage. Could Hooch be the next Terry? He then drops a bloated cloud firebomb combination but probably should mention that to the other cultists, as he did technically pinch him when no one was looking. Then at this point, to pour petrol on the already lit flame, a juggernaut decides he wants to join the party. But thankfully, he's more interested on banging on walls than banging my brains out. Thankfully, Hooch also pinched himself a long-range rifle, which he's able to easily use to finish off the heart. But now he needs to collect its goodies as evidence, whilst also escaping in the car and avoiding that juggernaut. Haha, <laughs> a little bit of wall-climbing hijinks, Hooch. You're a goddamn genius, my friend. And thank Thankfully, all the zombies have vacated the tartan mark. That means Hooch is able to collect a sack of materials and a new weapon. Now, once he takes out a freak, he'll be able to safely go back with his head held high. But Hooch certainly isn't stupid enough to take on a grown juggernaut. He's also smart enough to avoid a bloater. But if he had barreled through it at 65 miles an hour, we'd have accepted that on his application form. Instead, he takes the easy way out by sniping a screamer from distance. I mean, it might have taken three shots, but accuracy isn't exactly that important for the cult. Holy shit! A four pack of ferals! This game's getting ridiculous. What am I gonna do with a four pack of ferals? Look, you can't catch me, you can't catch me, da 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 da. But not wanting to set up any potential foreshadowing, I decided it'd be best just to leg it. But the thing about me and Lethal Zone is disaster is never that far away. Shit, we needed that. Wait, what? No! Hooch! This could be the end for Hooch! Thankfully, Hooch manages to get the sack of meds out before the car explodes. But now he's carless and a long way from base. Oh yeah, and there's a siege site directly in his way. This journey home will take all of his skill, all of his cunning, all of his adroll, as he's actually a really sleepy boy. Hooch decides he'll be safer to take out the siege site, and death from above is usually the best strategy for this. And thankfully, the only freaks about are a screamer and a bloater. And with the screamer taken care of, that's the siege site dealt with. Now it's time to go, Hooch. Pop them stim, son, and get fucked. 
back and running. There are several things I really don't want to run into on the way back to base. But at the top of that list is most likely a juggernaut. Oh, that's bad. That is very bad. Let's try not to lead a juggernaut straight back to base, is it? But even with his stamina 20% lower than regular people, Hooch is easily able to outrun the chunky bastard. Ah, shit, a bloater. Don't worry about a bloater. You can outrun a bloater, you tet. Fucking juggernaut up your ass. That's what you want to be worried about. Thankfully, Hooch gets back safe and sound without taking a single smidge of plague damage. This man might be a future leader. Now it's the turn of Jermaine, who's legally blind, but his addiction to getting lit on lean gives him 50 plus infection resistance. With no car for this group of alcoholics, Jermaine is forced to take his quest on foot. But luckily that gives him plenty of chance to practice his golf swing. But he's also a very unpatient man. He also found literally nothing of any use. So not only is he unpatient, he may also have a terrible eye for loot. Holy shit, that is absolute bollocks, mate. I'm calling bullshit on that one, boys. It's like watching fucking Alison Becker in his prime, which is right now, funnily enough. Jermaine gets to the location of his play car. There are several hordes gathered in this location, but there's no easy cheeseball tactic for this heart. Sometimes you just gotta pop a zanny and beat your meat. Although technically this wouldn't be my meat, but it is 2023. You're perfectly allowed to beat someone else's meat, provided that they've given you written and verbal consent, which this play cart technically hasn't. So I look forward to seeing the hashtag Jtalbert is over party trending on Twitter. Anyway, the best life advice anyone can ever give you, when the crowds get too big, don't be afraid to whip out your explosives. I tried to confuse the horde by going out of the side door and closing the door behind me. I then do a little bit of sneaky sneaky around the front. Okay, that did not work. That did not work in the slightest. But thankfully there's a shipping container with an accessible ladder nearby. <laughs> I need a bullet to the face. This guy's gonna fit in well. I like him. Now here's the problem that we're facing. We only have one stamina pill remaining. But remember, we've also got no transport home. And the hordes can only get bigger. Maybe I need to save it for my route home. But you're not gonna have an application accepted into the lizard gang with that kind of attitude. While hires a kite, Jermaine runs in and smacks it as hard as he can. He then drops back and cleanses the thing with fire, successfully killing the heart. But he still needs to collect a gun and a sack of materials as evidence. And when he gets a safe distance from the way, house he pops a couple of unsuppressed gunshots. That is hopefully so all the hordes will be drawn outside. But Jermaine is not that lucky. A blood foul has heard the shots and decides that Jermaine needs to be put on the menu. This isn't necessarily the worst thing as Jermaine does need to kill a freak as part of his initiation. But it does mean he's not going to be able to take the easy route out by killing a screamer like Hooch did. By the way, let me know who your favourite new recruit is in the comment section. Well, at least the feral's dead. And all of that commotion does mean that the warehouse is pretty much empty and Jermaine is able to collect himself a new weapon and a sack of ammo supplies. Now all he's gotta do is get back to base without being turned into a member of the undead. He does of course take an opportunity to boot a screamer because why wouldn't you? They are incredibly annoying. Okay, this was a mistake. Okay, he's got play cure. No, uh, no not play cure. Well, he does have play cure. In fact, how does he have five of them? Jesus Christ, what a greedy bastard. Maybe Jermaine was trying to sell them to a rival cult. That might be a good reason to stick his head on the chopping block. <laughs> On the way back, Jermaine manages to avoid quite a nasty wandering horde that was built up of bloaters, screamers, a feral, and a juggernaut. Unfortunately, though, he has led a small gathering of regular zombies back towards base, so he's gonna have to sort that shit out before his application can be considered. Unfortunately, Jermaine runs out of stamina and decides to bitch it. Hello, feral cultists. Do you mind coming and giving a hand? Look, I'm very successful on my quest. But Jermaine is very much on his own. He pops down from the safety of that abandoned car and starts smacking zombies like his life depends on it. Which I suppose technically it kinda does. But as Jermaine clears out the final zombie, he starts to get a little cocky. You see there's a triple pack of ferals just outside our safety zone. But after a couple of shots, they don't seem to show much interest. That is until Jermaine moves on to kill a regular zombie. But unfortunately he's not quick enough to get the kill and gets tackled. Oh, he's been more than tackled, he's been thrown by his throat. The two other knobheads then decide to join the party and things aren't looking good for Jermaine. But he is able to retreat back to the safety of an abandoned car. Uh, hi fellow cultists, it's me again Jermaine. Nope, nobody wants to help out against a triple pack of ferals. Not, not a single person. And to be honest, who can blame him? But thankfully, after killing two from the safety of that car, Jermaine has regained his stamina and has plenty of ammo left. So that final feral isn't much trouble. And after significantly more trouble than Hooch, Jermaine makes it back to safety. And last up to face the trial of fire is Shelly. Shelly thinks the earth is flat and the royal family are secretly lizard people. But most importantly, she's a mother who lost a son during the outbreak. And that kind of compassion is not something 
and that just goes away. So she accepts a distress call from a stranger miles away. But she gets chased by a feral and has to do a cheeky retreat. She does manage to defeat the beast, but in doing so has taken on a fair bit of damage. So she rushes back to the infirmary to remove any trace of infection. But by doing that, she led a horde directly to the front gates. And she's not even offering to help clear them out. Disgusting behaviour that is, love. You'll also notice she's high on experimental medicine. Well, at least she's got one trait that'll make her a decent cultist. She runs past the juggernaut we've seen earlier. In fact, she runs past two of the bastards. Alright, yeah, that wandering horde also happens to have everyone's least favourite crackhead. Just don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. It can't hurt you if it can't see you. Thankfully, she's able to kill the beast before she becomes part of the menu. But her problems aren't over just yet. The gunfire, even though it's suppressed, has attracted hordes. But the cult has an outpost with landmines set nearby. So as long as she can make it there, she'll have a refuge point to base from. Which she does. So yay for Shelly. And thankfully, the person who made that distress call is just outside the safety zone. I try sneaking around the back to aid in her assistance. But she starts popping shots and that attracts all manner of shit. And as it's the middle of the night, I can see precisely fuck all. So I decide to help us both out by illuminating the area a smidge. At least now we can see the things that are trying to kill us, even if they are on fire and technically able to do more damage. But unfortunately, singed eyebrows are just a risk you're gonna have to take if you want to be a member of the lizard gang. But no matter what I do, the crowds just keep growing. So after getting their attention, I run back to the safety of my field of landmines. It's a bloody good thing I've got a light foot, otherwise I'd be joining all of these knobheads in the afterlife. After a couple of rounds of this, I'm able to clear out the horde, but as you can see, I've taken serious damage in the process. Hung has asked for my assistance in getting back home, and I agree as long as she helps me get a working car. So I head back to my outpost to heal and collect a toolkit. And thankfully there's an abandoned car just the other side of that petrol station. But here's the issue. I have an abundance of toolkits, but I kinda turned all of my fuel resources into molotovs. Perhaps a tactical boo-boo on my part, but you simply can't put a price on fire safety. Unfortunately the petrol station had already been looted, but there's a garage in town that should have a spare can of fuel. Hung clears the area outside while I search for the fuel, which I actually find on the first container I search in. But my stupid little ADHD brain doesn't let me leave until I've searched every single container. That extra 15 seconds meant a feral has decided to join the party, which is actually okay news for Shelly, as she has Hong as a distraction. I try leading the feral to the field of landmines, but it seems this feral is smarter than the average. He backs out just before setting them off and goes straight for Hung. Hung then makes it to my landmine field, but unfortunately gets singed in the process. Come on, just Make it to here! Just make it here! Come on, you can do it! But every time she gets up, a new landmine goes off and she gets singed once again. I believe in you! Hung! You got this! Please, Hung! Just make it to me! But Hung isn't looking for anything logical like safety. She doesn't care about a comfy bed or a warm meal. Hung just wants to watch the undead burn. Can I get an RIP Hung in the comment section? If you don't think that's the saddest thing to happen in gaming this year, then you are quite simply dead inside. But at least now with no one slowing her down, Shelly's able to get to the car and refuel it. So at least as a group, they is finally a car between them. But Shelly just can't shake her compassion to help out strangers. And Sam is defending his back door like a conservative in a gay club. There actually seems to be more zombies than I first anticipated. Well, it's a bloody good thing I put all of my fuel into mollies then, innit? And you thought that was a tactical misplay, didn't you? Never question my tactical intelligence, especially when it comes to flammables. Anyway, with all the zombies cleared, Sam wants help to find his friend. Which I obviously agree to because Shelly is a lovely lady. Although if we're being honest, a question driver. We get to the hillside house and it's time to get to work. Sam's friend is surrounded by the undead, but it's alright because I'm an absolute beast with a rifle. Look at that, that's gotta be about at least 75% accuracy. Which statistically makes me better than the average moron. Anyway, that's the house cleared of zombies, and the strangers give me a sack of civilian ammo as payment. And Shelly's happy with that day's work, so decides to call it a night and head back to base. She's proven a compassion for others is another way of getting what you need. There's no need for violence, there's no need for murder, there's there's no need for extortion. But how will the other cultists react to this news? She failed her task of taking out a play card. And how are we supposed to make this town safe if she can't even follow simple orders? But the cult is crafty. They tell Shelly that all of her crimes shall be forgiven if she can harvest a bloater gland. But as she gets close, they take a pop with a sniper rifle. And that unfortunately means that she contracts blood plague. But they had taken all of the cure off her before she had left. So she crawls back to base desperate for a savior. But the only savior she finds is Gaz with a loaded pistol.
Now it's time to move base, but I need some additional influence. So swap to Robert, who's looking for Eagle Eye's rifle. But thanks to all of my balls to the wall strategies, we have several play carts awake and are sending wandering hordes to a siege site nearby. But they're literally wandering past my base to collect at a siege site. How zombies became the dominant force on Earth, I'll never know. Especially when they have the tactical intelligence of Gareth Southgate. Before shit gets too serious, Robert jumps in the van deep to one skedaddles. Abandoning everyone for self-preservation is just another part of the lizard gang cult. So Robert's gotta travel to the Ditchwater police station, as that's where Eagle Eye would have helped in the opening days of the outbreak. Legend states he used to sleep with his rifle, so if he was ever there, the rifle was there with him. But with my current fuel reserves, I'm never gonna get there. I need to make a pit stop. I decide this garage would be an half eaten place to look. But unfortunately, a bloater sneaks up on me, and I'm calling bullshit on that one, boys. I wasn't even in the cloud, for fuck's sake. I'd say Robert's quest for influence hasn't got off to the best start, especially as I don't even find fuel in this garage. But I do find some building materials, some parts, and some guitar strings, with a note that says they're not effective for strangling zombies. Well, it's fair to say I'm devastated. The last thing we need right now is some twat playing Wonder War around the campfire. Thankfully, my route takes me past the fire station. And everyone knows the majority of arsonists are firefighters, so if I don't find any gasoline in here, I'll eat my shoe. But I suppose that's very easy to say when you post-production commentate over gameplay that you yourself recorded. There shall be no shoe eating today, thank you very much. So I get to the police station that just so happens to be in the heart of plague territory. And instead of just blocking this gate regularly, I decide to get cocky. If I can turn it around, I can load up the arse end without even leaving the compound. But did you know bloaters are quicker than they first appear? And you can't just jump out of the van if you've got a dickhead clinging to the side? I get infected and my health drops quicker than my crypto wallet. And unfortunately, this is where Robert must leave us. And as his lungs fill with a toxic substance, he wonders if all of this shit was worth it. Rest in peace, Robert. Rest in peace, my friend. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. Robert is built different. Let's be honest, we all know a stubborn old bastard who just refuses to die. And Robert is powered by pure grumpiness. And that, my friends, is why we always carry multiple player cures on lethal zone. And yeah, yeah, look, I know, I get it, it's my fault. But everyone loves a bit of drama when you're simply just trying to build a base. After that, I can safely search the police station, and I successfully find Eagle Eye's rifle. But I think Robert gets a little too excited, if you know what I mean. Can't believe I'm really holding this in my hands. It's beautiful. Jesus Christ, but calm down, it's only a gun, like. How the bloody hell would he react if he had a genuine thing of beauty in his hands? Like Ryan Reynolds' peanut. Moving swiftly on, Robert backtracks to our building outpost, where he can drop off everything he's collected into the supply locker. Now it's time for Gaz to do his thing. As the last red talon in the squad, Gaz is the only one qualified for this mission. He travels to that southwest corner where two play carts remain. But the thing about Gaz is he's more than happy to try out some experimental medicine. For the uninitiated, that is scent block. And for the most part, that means zombies will just leave me alone. So using my heavy weapon, I get the first phase of the heart out of the way, and then I can step back and let it release all of his gases safely. Then like a herd of sheep, the zombies get bored and follow each other out of the room. And I swear to God, if there's a single comment related to sheep shagging down below, I'm gonna come out swinging for you fuckers. Weirdly, the second phase is over with one swing of the axe. I then realise it's been three and a half minutes into a video and I'm yet to set anything on fire. That is the exact opposite of growth, it's time to rectify that. Then one more power swing ends the player cart. But there's no time to dick about looting, that scent block has a timer. Funnily enough, the second player cart's also in a factory with an identical layout. I'm guessing the architect just went control C, control V, as it was a Friday and it's time to hit the pub boys. I again complete phase one with my heavy axe, and this time try to keep the zombies distracted outside with some firecrackers. And that actually works incredibly well. Bish bash bosh, that's our second heart taken care of. I take a second to collect some bits and bobs from the heart, dodge my way through the crowd, then before I leave, ignite them with burning vodka. What a waste of some good vodka. I should have used something less valuable to the future of society, like petrol or diesel or something. Anyway, it's probably not a good idea to fight ferals when I don't need to. Let's go turn this stack of shipping containers into a home. Also, let me know what your favourite base is in the comment section. So I enter the container fort and I do wonder how this place came to exist. There's no way someone would have made this before the fall of society, and I can't see a crane anyway. I reckon it was the same fuckers that built the pyramids. Anyway, my calculations were a little off, and we were a little short on influence. I've got plenty of shit I could sell in my supply locker, but seeing as I haven't particularly been nice to any of my neighbours, I've got no one to sell to. But there are a couple of slowly dying infestations around here, and I only need 140 influence. Well, I get 10 for just killing this blood feral by here. Oh yes, this is the smartest play we can do, even though I'm completely out of stamina pills. As I get to the first, the bloater pops, so I throw a fuel bomb I found in one of those play cards. Unfortunately, the 
cloud dissipates just as I lob it, so we unfortunately don't get a pretty explosion. But one screamer headshot and one slightly singed eyebrow get the job done. I decide to climb a billboard to scout the area, and I think the whole chase in me is fairly sizable. But there's a reason they call me the zombie slaying John Wick. Oh shit, hang on, I've just realised something. The comment section often refers to the ferals as dogs or puppies, and I'm also the feral hunter. Holy shit, I've got too many fucking aliases. Surely I can't be the zombie slaying John Wick and the feral hunter. Am I actually that dodgy Russian Theon Greyjoy? Well, holy shit, that's a plot twist and half, isn't it? But whatever, 46 influence remaining. Two more ferals rush from a nearby infestation, and I decide to test something out. And I'm happy to say ignited blood to gas is not an effective way of taking out blood ferals. Remember, I do these experiments so you don't have to. 36 influence remaining. That's another feral. 26 influence remaining. Okay, maybe my maths needs a bit of brushing up. I'm pretty sure you get 25 influence for taking out a juggernaut, but I'm pretty certain I haven't got the resources for that. Instead, I run around picking up the ammo all the ferals have dropped. I can then jump to the next infestation, and two quick headshots later, that's all the influence I need. But the last thing I want to do is lead a massive horde back to an indefendable base. I wouldn't be able to claim it if there's a million and one fuck faces banging at the door. So I use a firecracker as a distraction, and climb over every wall between me and the container fort. I then sneak through the back door like a cheeky little pinky finger. I then claim the container fort as a base, and everyone can move all of their shit in. And now it's time to start building. But that's boring, so we'll await the grand reveal later. And what can I say? Watch time is one of the most important analytics on YouTube. Still using gas, I try to clear the hordes that have gathered outside the fort. But that's when I realise there's a juggernaut heading this way, and I'm not equipped for this sort of situation. So I head back inside. But did you know zombies are smarter than they appear? These little shits have learned how to open doors. Come on now, mate, that's a bit unrealistic, don't you think? They're hardly a Jurassic Park velociraptor. But with them dealt with, it's time to face the big boy. So I fire a couple of shots into his face, then dodge far right like I've never been touched by a woman. A couple of more shots to the face drop him to his knees, but like a cuckold relationship, I'm not the one to finish him off. Next up, it's time for Gaz to retrieve the Impaler. You know, the one that Loren left behind when he popped it. I certainly don't remember it being in this kind of state, so I'm guessing a juggernaut has been using this bad boy as his plaything. I also decide to loot one of Loren's player carts on the way past. Shout out to Loren, he was a proper real one. I say that, he was probably the leader for the grand total of like three episodes, then died of blood plague like ten minutes it's in or something. Gaz then fixes up the car. I then swap to the Cavania popping Jermaine, who makes his first appearance in his new cult robes. Jermaine has a blank fifth slot, and I intend to teach this bastard how to cook, but obviously nothing with a chemical composition. If this little junkie knew how to cook meth, it would be the end for all of us. And I need the cooking skill in order to craft energy drinks in the kitchen and build in. But other than that, Jermaine is no longer needed, as Laura decides she wants to clear an infestation. And she's feeling a bit balls to the wall, if you know what I mean. Firework launcher equipped, and choosing to drive the yellow sports car. She heads to the infestation on the edge of town that's festered in a gun shop. But this is arguably the hardest infestation you will ever face in your life, as this is the infestation where juggernauts come out of the ground. Luckily, all I have to do is headshot a screamer. Although this makes the ground-dwelling juggernaut rather angry. And you can't really blame him, I did just shoot his mate in the face. But there's simply no need for this level of retaliation. Shelly worked really hard to get that car. I can't believe it's bloody gone already. Although you know me, I like to push things to the absolute absolute limit. And that usually works out about as well as you'd expect. I haven't even had a chance to use the firework launcher, so you know for a fact we're not putting Laura to bed yet. So it's time for us to loot everything we can from the local area. From these toilets I find meds, chemicals and pills, then after dropping them at base, get into a fight with a blood feral. But did you know you could actually kill crackheads by just shooting them in the face? Damn man, I can't believe how good I am at this tips and tricks shit. And that's another warehouse looted. Although still no use of the firework launcher, what an absolute cock tease. I also have no idea why he decided to do this shit on foot. Let's jump in the van, it'll be so much easier. I loot this tavern, this warehouse, then whip out the firework launcher on these bloaters. And I think we can all agree that's a very pretty way to die. It's also handy to remember that Laura has swords play. I then loot this bunker, fix this van, and decapitate another zombie. And that's basically this entire area looted. However, if this isn't the first video you've watched, you'll know by now that I'm a greedy little bastard. This time I swap out to Patricia, as she could do with the experience. And while I'm waiting for my building projects to finish, I push myself just a little bit too far. I collect the remains from this play cart, then go around back to the utility shed. But a couple of zombies follow me inside the building. I manage to fight them off okay, but more have joined the party outside. And as is usually the case in Lethal Zone, this escalates rather quickly. So I whip out the machine gun just to thin the hordes. I know this means more zombies will spawn, but I only need a quick 30 seconds to get in and out. Uh, of the utility shed, that is. Uh, nothing else. I get my 30 seconds to loot, but realise my pockets are already full. 
home. And now another Horde fancies having a go. I get back to the van in a pretty awful state, and I don't mean Florida. Unfortunately, I can't just get in the van and leave, as I didn't park it with his front end against a solid object. With this many zombies around, they'd cling to the front of the van and destroy it before I even got out of the compound. I need to lure them away. So I do a lap around the warehouse, then fire another unsuppressed shot to lead them out into the open. I then pause, waiting for them to charge at me. Time starts to move slowly. I count to three, then fucking leg it, son. I get into the van, but one of them clings to the front, so I swing it harder than a married couple with no spark left. And finally, I can escape that horde. And I know what you're thinking. The base is like 10 seconds away at most. But turns out these zombies have an incredibly low attention span. Rise up, my ADD brothers. Rise up. Now I think it's time we give old Patricia a rest. So here it is, the grand reveal. We have a level 2 infirmary. That's because all of my doctors are dead and I can't upgrade it to level 3. We then have a max level kitchen and command centre. And that command centre has a network facility mod, so I can claim an extra two outposts. I then stuck a red talon officer's quarters in the only indoor building we have. The storage has been upgraded for ammo and fuel, as I like to shoot and burn shit. I've also got a red talon workshop and red talon watchtower. I've also got two level three farms, and when using the boost yields, I'm gaining like six plus food a day. Damn dude, I should open up a McDonald's. And then last but not least, we have a generator building. And that's because we're not playing with boons, and 2000 influence for a power outpost is a little bit dear on my end. But just as we start to settle in, a curveball gets thrown at us. Grossest shit just happened to me. I plunged my knife into a zip with purple eyes and it fucking exploded. I was covered in guts and that shit burns. So our first obstacle to compete with is gunk zombies. And while we're waiting for those zombies to become active, I have an outpost that's become infested and it's time to clear that shit out. It's a building outpost and since it's become overrun, I'm now losing a substantial amount of building materials a day. Although on the way I do get rear-ended by a homicidal pack of puppies. Well that seems like an insurance scam to me so I'm getting the hell out of here. So I get to the unfinished house and I've got one plan in mind. Burn the entire thing to the ground. That clears the infestation but there's still a lot of zombies about, including the new gunky fuckers. And it's advisable not to get in a fist fight with them as they'll burn your skin and that. And this being lethal zone, shooting them will just cause more to spawn. But what can I say I'm an out of the box kind of thinker? <laughs> Oh, that health is dropping. That health is dropping very fast. It's all good. And that is how you cheese lethal zone. And what I mean by that is I set a load of landmines through my outpost defences. I also notice another infestation nearby, and seeing as it's only around the corner, Gaz decides to stretch his legs a bit. And for science, it's time to melee attack our first gunk zombie. Oh, wow. Oh, it continuously kills me. But have I ever told you the definition of insanity? I clear the infestation, then start the excavation of resources in this local area. What can I say? You can take the man out of Britannia, but you can't take the Britannia out of the man. But before we get to that, I continue with my scientific research. And remember, kids, the difference between science and dicking about is writing it down. But I'm an undiagnosed dyslexic, so maybe I'm not a scientist after all. Perhaps I'm just, like, fully psychotic. Hey, look at him! He's like a little worm. Come on, son. Come on, little worm boy. Whoop, don't like so, bitch. I stabbed the armored zombie in the head, but it turns out he's a gunk zombie. And for whatever reason, the gunkiness was delayed. Anyway, like I was saying, I make sure to loot the entire area. And once my car boot is full of goodies, I decide to head back to base to give Gaz a little rest. So as Gaz gets back to base, the explosive gunk zombie curveball ends. Now we need to let Gaz rest for five. As I know the next tutorial curveball will be the Lone Raider. And Gaz is my only character with Gunslinger, so I kind of want him to have to deal with the hot style enclave. So in the meantime, it's time for a bit of a training montage. So I've taken over as Hooch, who's practicing his aim by blasting into faces. But unloading his weapon into the faces of zombies isn't the only thing that he needs practice at. Luckily, he has a big long stick, and for once I'm not making an innuendo. He also gets into a fight with a blood feral, but he's completely out of energy drinks. Luckily, being a member of the lizard gang means he knows how to deal with being set on fire. Once he gets enough distance between himself and the beast, he turns to face him and readies his rifle. Oh, jeez. Jesus Christ, talk about bloody timing. If you ever get into this situation, you haven't got any explosives. The key is to always put as many obstacles between you and the feral, and pray someone comes to your rescue. Well, I think Hooch has done enough training for one day. It's time for Jermaine to do a bit of zombie slaying training. Remember, Jermaine is addicted to lean, and that has somehow given him a 20% resistance to the blood plague. So before the next zombie outbreak, I'm going to my local Tesco and raiding them of all their Colvonia. It might be the cough medicine with clout, but I'm telling you it doesn't have as much clout as this baseball bat. So Jermaine completes his training session, then we finally promote Gaz as leader. But we are still yet to have the next curveball spawn. So seeing as we're getting quite low on supplies, Gaz takes off in the Van Dito to do a supply run on the other side of the map. Oh, there's a blow, there's a blow, there's a blow! Ah, fuck! 
fuck off! Well, that hampered progress a little bit. Well, the hordes decided they couldn't be asked to chase a free meal. So we head onwards towards our destination. I loot this petrol station in the most surprising way possible by not alerting any of the zombies to my presence. But that's a rucksack of fuel stored and a full tank ready to go. As night properly starts to set in, I arrive at my gun shop. On this occasion, I decide not to activate the outpost defences so I can save as much ammunition as humanly possible. So I loot this auto shop and the scrapyard next door. I then move on to claiming some of the goodies from the play carts I've taken out previously. I collect fuel from this heart, then get into a minor raw traffic collision on the route to the next play cart. Yeah. That happens a lot, chat, if you're new around here. Cars spend more time on their roof and sides than they do on their four wheels. But I'm able to continue my looting at this house, although admittedly I do get into a bit of bother with the neighbours. But whatever, I'm rewarded handsomely for my efforts. I do this several more times, collecting building materials from this warehouse, an ammo resource from this military checkpoint, then more building materials and food rucksacks from these buildings over here. A survivor then radios asking for my assistance, and sensing some easy loot, I decide to give them a hand. This knobhead has the shit this name of all time, and he's asking if I'd watch his back while he scavenges for high value materials nearby. But he's gonna look like a right knob, because I've already looted everything there is to find at this warehouse. Even so, he reckons he might be able to find something valuable hidden, so I'm like, crack on son, I'll go stamp on the faces of the undead. He then claims he found something valuable, but we all know he's chatting shit. But he gives me a damn fourth slugger for my efforts. Giving me a baseball bat. What a prick. I then agreed to help out an enclave of medical professionals. They're looking to get set up so they can start supplying a health service to the rest of the town. But the term medical professional is a bit ambiguous in my eyes. At the end of the day, the last thing I want is a dentist giving me a cancer diagnosis, if you know what I mean. So I chat to their leader, Will, but before we can finish our conversation, we get attacked by raiders. But that's alright, because Gaz has enough ammunition to overthrow a third world government. They are very grateful to still be alive and give me a rucksack of Nurofen as a thank you. I then trade what little influence they had for some high valuable alcohol I had lying around the place. And my pockets are way too full, so unfortunately Unfortunately, I can't even raid the corpses. It's always a bad day when you can't make most of the baddies you've just slaughtered. So Gaz heads back to the container fort and unloads his spoils of war. I then swap back to Jermaine to complete his training. The plan is to max out this standing so he can make the most of his hero bonus. So armed with a 30 round shotgun, he heads to take on a player cart. And as always, he parks it strategically before heading inside to release hell on it. Well, at least that was the plan before everyone's least favourite crackhead rocks up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh shit. Jermaine managed to escape his encounter, I smack it square in the gob with a molotov. But as the crowd start to get too big, I retreat to the safety of the impaler's roof. From here, I put a couple of rounds into the heart, kill the feral, but then accidentally gas myself with a bloater gas grenade. Thankfully, I managed to get off a fuel bomb to detonate it, but it's fair to say Jermaine has taken a hell of a lot of damage. Thankfully, two more shots drops the play cart. As always, I'm still a greedy little bastard and want to take all of the goodies from that heart. So I do the whole massive loud loop tactic to get them all out of the house. From there, I can get back pretty safely and take everything I can get my grubby little hands on. And seeing as Jermaine is closer to death than Russell Brand's courier, it's time we went back home and put him to bed. But not in the way Russell did. Allegedly did. Next up to bat is Hooch. Again, I'm trying to max out Hooch's standing so we can take advantage of his hero bonus. And I figure the best way to do that is to take out another player card. And you know what they say, don't work harder, work smarter. So I try luring in the bloater for the easy kill. That goes slightly better than you'd expect. So basically, it didn't do a smidge of damage to the play cart, but at the same time I didn't die horribly. Ah, would you look at that. Balance in the world has now been restored. Oh my god, that's the second time today that I've been fucked by myself. Would you like to rephrase that? Not that, obviously. I get to the safety of the roof of the Impaler, just as the Feral decides to show his face. I then waste way too much ammo just trying to hit the thing. Fucking stay still! Self-proclaimed professional gamer, by the way. With that nuisance out of the way, I can finish the heart with my large stick. And again, not an innuendo. I then whip it out and finish off a full load. I can then loot the heart, yada yada yada, you know the deal by now. But with Hooch's standing still not maxed out, I agreed to go check out the local disturbance. I boot in the door, but discover all the people inside have been murdered. Their bodies have been penetrated with crossbow bolts, which is the sign of an extremely lazy archer. You'd never see Daryl Dixon doing that shit, you know what I mean? On one of their bodies, I find a note that was quite clearly written by a deranged madman. And like every great serial killer from history, they must have left a return to sender address on the back of that note, because I somehow know exactly where to find them. So I approach Trisha, really weary of what kind of psychopath I'm about to come 
up against. I then realise the entire gang is full of psychos, so I decide to recruit her to the cult. But she's like, nah, fuck off, you twat. And you know what the worst thing about being rejected by a psycho is? Sadly, I no longer have the option to kill her. You know what, that got a bit dark. Let's uh, get out of here rather sharpish. But before I do, I realise I can upgrade Hoochie's shooting skill. Gunslingin! Yes! I need my gunslingers, chat. I need my gunslingers. So after that, a semi-accomplished Hooch can retreat back home. Unfortunately, he didn't quite max out his standing, but given his health, I think we're just gonna take the L on this one. So now it's back to Robert, who's feeling like Billy Big Bollocks all of a sudden, as he wants to use Eagle Eye's rifle to take down a juggernaut, which he can actually do incredibly easily. Four swift headshots with the 50 cal drops him to his knees, but no thank you my friend, I'm a married man, and frankly she scares me more than you do. I've also noticed there's a triple pack of knobheads hanging out nearby. Alright, make that a double pack. Okay, I think I'm gonna learn to deeply regret that decision, especially considering my aim is worse than Tyson Fury's pull-out game. Seven kids, ah fuck, is that now? Seven? Jesus Christ, I feel sorry for his missus vagina. Anyway, I should stop talking about the hardest fucker in the world's wife and skedaddle before any more ferals turn up. Anyway, that's Robert's day shift over with, and we still haven't had a purple spawn, but surprisingly that's okay, because our next greatest character is about to be created. No, no, ignore that for fuck's sake. This is Jamie, and so far she's been a bit part character in our adventure, but today she's about to become one of the most valuable characters in State of Decay history. She agrees to go sell some of our leftover shite to a mysterious trader. These guys usually have two and a half thousand influence, and I intend to take every single cent. I sell him a load of my alcohol reserves, before realising he has a firearms training manual for sale. So I check Jamie's skills, and both her cardio and fighting need to be upgraded, and they upgrade to powerhouse and sword play respectively. That will be a phenomenal combination when paired with gunslinging. So I use the training manual and change her skill from assault to gunslinging. Now once I give her a sword and max out her sword play, she will be the ultimate zombie slaying machine. And with powerhouse I'll build a dropkick ferals to stun them. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I still got way too much shit I need to sell to this wandering trader. But sadly I won't get a chance to sell him half of it. Because as a horde starts wandering past, he decides to start blasting. This attracts a bloater and a juggernaut. And the best way to deal with Juggernauts is to outpace them. But there's one thing, well, more accurately, three things that you just can't outpace. Heads up, Daryl! This is actually really bad. You can say that again, but this is actually really bad. Oh! My eyes widen as the realisation sets in. I've just spent a grand and a half on creating the ultimate zombie survivor, just for her to die on the doorstep before I can even fully equip her. But what do we say to the god of death? Absolutely fucking not. Jamie manages to put enough distance between herself and the pack and heal her blood plague. Now undeniably the smart play right here is to run, but I'm not a smart man. I'm a greedy man. A big, fat, greedy bastard if you will. Because you see in my head, I still reckon I'm gonna kill these three ferals and that juggernaut and sell the rest of my ways to that mysterious trader. But yeah, turns out that's not gonna happen. So with that wheeler dealer now being used as a juggernaut flashlight, I get out of there quicker than a knobhead can comment, Skillish you. Luckily there's a red talon trader on the map that I can still sell to, and this is where things are gonna get controversial, because I decide to sell the Cleo Core. Look, I'm sorry, but since it's been nerfed, it's basically useless. And I got no plans on using it, so I might as well sell it so I can feed the wife and kids. But it was without a doubt worth it as I got myself a new gun and sword. As well as a lot of spare influence as well, alright? Don't shout at me in the comments. Then in the heart of darkness, I decided it would be a great use of my time to help out some strangers. I try to keep their defence as quiet as possible, but if they're whipping out their guns willy-nilly, then you can be damn straight I'm gonna do the bloody same. But finally, karma rewards my patience. There we go! A curve ball has finally spawned, but for some reason it's not the Lone Raider? I'm guessing it's a glitch. Either that or they've changed the and haven't let us know yet. Thankfully we're able to clear out the rest of the zombies, and the fuckers don't even give me a cup of tea like. I mean I don't like tea, it's disgusting, but that's beside the bloody point. But hey, at least we finally got a curveball to spawn, and it's called Scavenger Hunt. So our community will be deposited more into the supply locker, but the downside to that is we have a higher background noise coming from the base. But the problem I find with that is it doesn't actually tell you what item has been scavenged. I actually got quite a few of these pop-ups to tell me a new item had been scavenged, but with an already established community, it's almost impossible to establish what's new and what's old in my supply locker. Then while on a looting run, I get another curveball spawn, and it seems we've become famous on Instagram. Bloody hell, they're like buses, man. You wait nearly three hours for a curveball to spawn, and they all pop along at once. This curveball's called News Travels, and effectively the word of all of our good deeds had spread to the nation, which means we get things for a lot cheaper. Nobody mentioned the hundreds of people we murdered along the way. Anyway, it's time for Gav 
Gaz to go settle a dispute. And typically, it's only on the other end of the bloody map. There's this lad who's named Aaron. Well, that's very rude, Aaron. Um, if you want the sheriff to solve your dispute, that's not the way to treat me. He's complaining about Nobbed pulling out guns on him when he's walking past. But I'm more interested in all the discounts I can get from being Instagram famous. Give me those mollies. Give me that. And the energy drinks. I then speak to Raven and she's like, this dickhead keeps leading zombies directly to our house. And I'm like, well, in that case, it's your right to shoot the fucker. Aaron's not too happy about that, but he fucks off into the night, probably to get eaten by a blood feral or something. And with that dispute settled, it's time to start heading home. Well, that is until the last medics radio me and asking for my assistance. It turns out they've been attacked by yet more raiders. Honestly, what the bloody hell's going on with these guys? That's like the second time in the past hour that they've been attacked by knobheads. Knobheads are the alive kind may I add. At this point, I think they need to accept at least 40% of the blame. So I head back to base, but it turns out the guys I just saved are extremely needy. Hey neighbor, we found a location for our clinic, but the zombie situation is out of control. Can you help us out? Yes, Will. I think we can help you out, my friend. Although we do have a bit of a serious issue going on back at home. Nah, it's fine. We'll help out the strangers. And I think this job has Hooch's name written all over it. So after a quick arm up and fix up, I hit the road. Seems pretty simple to me. We bust in there, defeat whatever zombies are in there, and make the place nice and safe for our our, our friends. You know what? I'm not going to call them strangers anymore. They're our friends. We have an optional objective to chat to them first. But why would I waste valuable diesel travelling to them when I can just travel straight to the clinic via an off-road route that surprisingly doesn't end up with me on my roof. Fucking awesome! Nice one, Gaz. Leftover explosives, what a fine. Gaz, man, you are a legend. So I park up and get to work. I toss a molly, shoot the screamer, and everyone else runs outside, which thankfully clears the clinic, even if there's a party of knobheads in the front garden. It's a good thing you're doctors, because I might need some treatment for third degree burns. Then on the other side of the wall, I can stealth kill the zombies that fall over it. And you all know I love a cinematic takedown. I love that. That takedown. That was amazing. I never crouch because I'm like the least stealthy boy around. So I've never seen these stealth takedowns. I'm about to do another one. At this point, the medics arrive, and I take advantage of the curveball that's making me Instagram famous to get a discount on this first aid kit. Wait, how the fuck is that claimed again? Are you serious? I put bombs on that thing. It might be because you've done absolutely fuck all about the massive infestation problem you've got, you utter moron. So I suppose we better go sort that out. But that's when we get our next curveball to spawn, a well-oiled machine. This combined with the two other curveballs I have active will become incredibly productive. But seeing as it's an up-and-coming curveball, we'll get to that in a bit. While I've been loitering about, the doctors have decided they need some more play examples. And there's some in this dead heart that's located just across the road. However, there is a juggernaut wandering about its back garden. So for once, I decide to play it safe and repeatedly batter it with my rear end. Now, I'm not particularly down with the kids, but I'm pretty sure this is the definition of a power bottom. The last time I had something this big near my rear end, I couldn't sit down for two days. I suppose that's what happens when you eat too much smart price granola. Anyway, I grab the samples and a few other bits to sell. I can then deliver them to the doctors and sell them the shit I'm never gonna use. Then with a sick reverse around a 90 degree corner. Anyway, onwards and upwards, we need to go clear that infested outpost. And we're gonna be going with the same tactic we did last time. Blast everything without a pulse and burn the freaks to oblivion. But on this occasion, I decide to save the ammo resource and not set the landmines. And this wasn't planned, but it turned out to actually be quite a smart play. I then decide to clear out the infestation nearby, as that might be what's causing my outpost to become overrun all the time. And I, uh, certainly don't get stuck along the way. Wait, there's a juggernaut on the roof? He's no problem at all then, is he? But I refuse to let this opportunity go to waste. How can anyone possibly turn down the chance of an epic rooftop battle with a juggernaut? So using my arse end as a battering ram? First night flashback, we hey? I clear out all of the zombies below. So now it's time for an epic cinematic showdown. For which you'll notice I turned off the HUD for. But then I realise I can't throw a pipe bomb if I don't know what's equipped. Okay, yeah, this was a mistake, this was a mistake. So now with the immersion breaking HUD back on, it's time to duel. And I don't know what it is about a rooftop fight scene but it just makes 12 year old me weep with excitement. I think it might have something to do with the original Spider-Man trilogy. What can I say, Sam Remy obviously shares my excitement for the rooftop fight scene. And before the comment section starts shouting about jugs being immune to fire, I'm setting an ambiance, okay? Look how cool this is. In fact, looking back, I think I could have used this smoke as cover to get an easy win on him. Kinda like how smoke grenades shield you from the undead. Rather, predictably, I do set myself on fire, and then I get stuck on the roof of the petrol station forecourt. It might be rather immersion breaking, but I've gotta use the stuck radio command. What do you mean cost is discounted? It's free. Thankfully, I don't get teleported into the middle of a triple pack of ferals, so we can continue this cinematic match.
master. Oh, hang on. No, get back up there, you dickhead. I narrowly avoid his next attack, then return fire with a shot of my own. And just like a rambling boomer, if you put enough lead into someone, he's bound to tumble. Yes, ha ha ha. Who is your master now? Oh, shit. But no plague in the world will stop me from ending this bastard once and for all. Although, imagine how sick this would have looked with no HUD equipped. You know what? I think I might be the Christopher Nolan of State of Decay, you two. Anyway, that fight has left me a bit short on resources, but luckily my outpost is nearby. This is what I get for being lazy and trying to take it a shortcut. The stuck command still has 19 seconds remaining on the cooldown, but I simply don't have time for that, so just use sheer willpower. Anyway, let's check out these curveballs. News travels fast, basically I'm Instagram famous, and I get shit heavily discounted. Then there's scavenger hunt, where we were a bit noisy, but the community are gathering expensive shit for me. Then finally, we have the cream of the crop. A well-oiled machine simply makes us unbeatable. We can craft items with fewer parts and materials, our food and meds production increases, and it also makes us a little bit quieter. This means, with the exception of materials, I am making absolute bank. 17 food a day. That is insane. That's actually mental. I use these discounts to upgrade as many of my outposts as possible for half of the material costs that I usually would. It still costs a full price on influence, and that's why I can't immediately upgrade everything to level 3. And it actually gets even better. But I didn't realise that till later in the session, so we'll get to that soon enough. In the meantime, it's time to scout out some of the land. I think it's about time we took out another player cart, and this seems quicker than looking around aimlessly. So let's smack some strangers' meat. Luckily, the player cart is nearby, although we do have a medium-sized horde chasing me. After another strategical positioning, I try to enter the building quietly, but the knobheads inside have already heard my engine, so I pop out Wraith Energy and start smacking it up. With my newfound stamina, I can dodge through the crowds to stun them, and that gives me a couple of seconds to get a heavy hit on the heart. But when the crowds get too big, I drop a Wily Peak Grenade and jump through the window. It's probably closer to my car than, uh, the play cart. But all is not lost. Although the flames may have missed, there's now a lot of smoke guarding the play cart. And I'm pretty certain that means the zombies can't see me, so I successfully get the first phase out of the way. Then the smoke dissipates at the worst possible time. Okay, yep, now I'm now I've got the plague. I got the Rona. Luckily, my chemistry skills rival Walter White, and I sort myself out with a handcrafted cure. But just when you think it can't get any worse. Oh okay, so that is gonna be an issue. Luckily, I brought blood to gas for this exact eventuality. Pair that with a Molly and that's the game's most valuable explosive. That's the second phase out of the way, but I don't want to use any more blood to gas because they're very valuable and I haven't got a way of making them yet. So it looks like we're going back out on foot. We've only got one last can of Wraith Energy, which you can purchase using the link in the description using code JTalbot for 10% off at checkout. So unfortunately, this one's going to have to be a quickie. I'm sorry, babe, but sometimes it happens, all right? We're going to fight it in the in the open. I'm sure we all agree this isn't the ideal situation to be in, but when life throws a wheelbarrow full of shit at you, you use it as fertilizer. I actually want tried to buy industrial grade fertilizer, but apparently due to my previous Google searches it was deemed a security risk. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but one more molly clears the player cart. But I also want to loot it without having to come back to it later, so try taking the hordes on a wild little goose chase. And this actually worked surprisingly well, although it looks like some knobhead is trying to steal my loot. Actually it turns out he's looking for some fuel at the military comm station nearby. And that was going to be my next pit stop, so I'm like, yeah sure son, let's make it a road trip. But obviously not before looting the player cart. But as a general rule of thumb, my life is very really that simple. Oh shit! That is that is not a good thing. But Olsen looks like he got out unscathed. What an absolute prick. After the cloud dissipates, we rock up to the military station. We batter a zombie or two. Then I find a rucksack of jerry cans, which I trade to Olsen for a sack of medical supplies. And to be honest, I don't know if this was a good trade or not. In the comment section, what do you think I use more of? Molotovs or play cure? I didn't realise how full my pockets were, so unfortunately I couldn't loot everything I wanted from the military comm station. I should probably start using a vehicle with a bigger boot than the Impaler. Anyway, I get back to my building outpost, you know, the one I cleared earlier, but there's an assortment of shit up my arse and I'm not particularly in the mood for a fight. Given the state of my health, I'm sure you can see why. So it's time to get out the landmines. Heavily discounted landmines, may I add? By the way, those landmines usually cost three ammo resources. Cutting it down to one basically makes me invincible, and that is all down to the well-oiled machine curveball. If you get this curveball, you absolutely need to make the most of it. Then after a quick heal up, I decide to go give some bullets to an allied enclave nearby. They're very grateful for my gift, and I don't think I've ever been collectively this nice in a single episode. But remember, my ulterior motive is rinsing them of influence. Next up, I want to loot this row of shops. I plan on turning one of these into an outpost, and use the landmines to keep me protected while I loot the others. However, in lethal zone, things can very quickly escalate. Honestly, these shops like fucking clown cars. How they got that many zombies in a DIY store, I'll never know. Hooch then contracts blood plague for the second time today, but I think I handled this very respectfully. 
respectfully. So once again inject myself with homemade medicine, but remember Hooch has now done a solid 35 minutes of hard graft. I know he wants to have a little lie down. So my looting plan goes out of the window and it's time to retreat. We then swap to Jamie at the unfinished house, as she has some training she needs to complete. Once she maxes out her swords play, she'll be able to instill kill zombies with a single button press. That paired with powerhouse and gunslinging, she'll be able to make the apocalypse a bitch. But first she needs to learn how to drop kick. Okay, Sam, that has actually worked really well. Finish it off. Now we gotta slice and dice everything without a pulse. But after killing a solid, like, three zombies, it hasn't gone up in the slightest. Looks like we're just gonna have to cut up some more undead meat. But very quickly, the crowds grow out of control. And I didn't have a single Molotov in the supply locker. So I retreat back to safety and let the landmines take care of the massive horde. And those explosions draw a triple pack of knobheads. And I don't trust my dropkick ability quite yet. So I trust the landmines to once again deal with the issue. This has been an absolutely abysmal training sequence. So I decide to go back to helping out knobheads. That's the enclave I decided would be in knobs previously. And I still have a sack of medical supplies that Olsen gave me earlier. But before I go there, I want to make sure I'm well armed just in case a fight breaks out. I also notice I'm getting a bit low on the good pain medication. And my boy, do I have a curveball that'll help sort out that situation. I can craft nine bottles of painkillers and all it's gonna cost is two jugs of ethanol and one medical resource. So I do what anyone would do in this situation and abuse it like an addict that had found a used needle. But what else can I create with these cheap resources. Only my favourite weapon of all time. And Molotovs are heavily discounted to one fuel resource and 50 scraps. I also get a similar discount when crafting ammunition through the workshop. But considering I don't use that much handgun ammo, I uninstall that mod and reinstall the rifle ammo press. And while we wait for that, I scrap all the weapons I have no intention on ever using so I can have as many scraps as humanly possible so I can craft as many Molotovs as a growing warlord needs. I then craft myself a ton of Molotovs as well as a ton of five 56 ammo. The 762 ammo is still heavily discounted, but I'm not sure it's worth three times the price of the 556. Have a look at all the ammo I've created. 537 562 rounds is absolutely insane in Lethal Zone. But that's not the only thing I was creating. I now have 90 Molotovs at my disposal. Anyway, I've got some medical supplies I need to drop off. And that actually goes down without a problem. I can't believe we've evolved from psychotic warlords to still complete psychopaths, but realising that humans are still actually quite a valuable resource. Things kick off with Jermaine saying he knew a dude who could get pharmaceuticals without a prescription. Uh, yeah, that's called drug dealing. Obviously, Jermaine is going to be ending up with knowing the drug dealer. He's a bloody cough syrup drinking knobhead and completely ignoring the dire situation we have building around our home. I decide some recreational pharmaceuticals should be our top priority. Jermaine knew a guy who knew a guy who used to stash the drugs at the local ice cream shop. Unfortunately, this ice cream shop is now right next to an infestation. And this infestation is also housing the local crackheads. There we go. Oh, look, shotgun shells. I need them. That's because Jermaine is equipped with a 30-round shotgun. Right, let's clear this infestation while we're here, I suppose. And thankfully, one molly's enough to clear out that infestation. Running on it. You are running on empty. Pop a Wraith Energy, that's the best way. What a dirty, rotten sellout. I'm actually able to burn the entire horde down without even singeing an eyebrow. But this being lethal zone, one horde falls and another shall take its place. I do eventually end up in the ice cream shop and find the prescription drugs. And that is Jermaine's mission complete, although we do have an optional objective to chat to Bones. And being the deviant he is, Jermaine will always take the opportunity to troll someone. Get back here, you prick. I've seen what drugs do. If you want to bring them into our community, we might have trouble. Alright, but calm down, it's a bit of diazepam. I'm not exactly loading up a syringe, so I drop them off and hopefully that means Bones will chill out a bit. Jermaine also notices an infesting horde wandering past outside, and this is a perfect opportunity to show off his 30 round shotgun, as well as his lust for fire I suppose. But unfortunately armoured zombies are immune to the flames. But what aren't immune to the flames are bloaters, and they look so pretty when burst into flames. But with no stamina left from that fight, Jermaine is unable to avoid this plague zombie. Then 30 seconds later, this plague zombie is not able to avoid these hands. We then get a message over the radio from the medical folk asking if we know where we could find a portable generator. And Jermaine knows exactly where to find one. In a crashed chemical train? I'm guessing this little smackhead must have been trying to cook or something. Or maybe he left one behind or seen one in the rubble. But either way, that's a portable generator. Let's go deliver it to the medical folk. So Jermaine arrives at their medical centre and gives Will the portable generator. But all he gets is a thank you. A thank you for supplying him with the gift of electricity? Jermaine has never been so insulted. Unfortunately, he's not currently equipped for revenge, but I'm sure he will return to these medical folk. For now, he just lets the rage build up upon him, deep inside just waiting for things to pop. In order to truly get some anger out, he decides to take on a player card. But first, he's gotta find one. I think that's a feral. 
I think it just killed itself on my car. Yes. Yes, it did kill itself on my car. But ferals don't hunt alone in lethal zone. I don't know why everybody's scared of ferals all the time. Ah, ah, Jesus Christ. Oh, you just took out my freaking door, knobhead. I then take a moment to back over his mate as revenge is a dish best served with a spiky ass. I then find a sleeping player cart, and Jermaine gets to creep in. This time high on caffeine, instead of the cough syrup cocktail he used to. Silence is your ally. But after noticing a bloater, it's time to light shit up. Stealth goes out of the window, and that molly I threw didn't even light any of the other knobheads on fire. After the heart phases, I dodge my way out of there, and sacrifice a smidge of damage to drop my second molly. I'm sure or you'll agree that worked out perfectly. With caffeine still coursing through my veins, I go back in for round two. Thankfully, the second phase gets off quicker, although this being a bathroom, I get stuck and take collateral damage. I toss a molly, hop through the window, and wait for them all to burn out. Then with the building clear, I can end the player cart. But guess who's just decided to join the party? Everyone's least favourite knobhead. Ah! Waka! 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 Seeing as a blood feral takes three headshots to kill, and my accuracy is worse than the Sun newspaper, I'm unable to take the easy video. Victory. Oh my god! But at least we learned that flaming zombies can't set off a bloater cloud, and I can then take out the feral. Although I once again sacrifice damage in order to do so. I then quickly loot the player cart before getting out of there. And once I've lost my pursuers, I can pull over and put that toolkit to good use. And with my tank topped up, I'm good to go. Ha. Huh. I've definitely done smarter things in my life. Definitely done smarter things in this game. All I can say is big up to the radio stack command for saving my life once again. Sensing some easy resources, I decide to help out some strangers nearby. And my 30 round shotgun does an excellent job of thinning out the horde that's assaulting them. They will owe me a, a great debt. They're very grateful for me saving their lives and offer me some resources in return. And I don't think I've ever been in this situation and not chosen the ammo rucksack. Gunpowder certainly is your ally in the zombie apocalypse. But you know who isn't? <laughs> The dodgy bastard you just met like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Now, given Jermaine's current health conditions, it would probably be a good idea to let the fucker rest. So we get back to base and shove him in the infirmary. I can then take over as Jamie. And this is a character I'm trying to turn into the ultimate zombie survivor. So we head out in order to complete her training. And where else is there better to train than the direct opposite corner of the map? Well, this certainly is a long way to drive to take down one play cart one infestation. But when I get there, I realise this is a play cart I can actually cheat. But it's all about the preparation. With the door open and swinging inwards, then if I park my car so the driver's side door faces into the building, I should be able to step straight in with my- Wait, what the fuck? Okay, I guess that didn't work. But we're supposed to be training up our sword playability anyway. Obviously not against him. I want to keep that little bastard as far away from me as humanly possible. And with a bloater burning for a bit of ambiance, it's time to start slicing and dicing. Obviously mixed in with the occasional dropkick. And I suppose a cheeky bit of leg amputation wouldn't hurt either. And dropkick. Okay, nope. How about now? Okay, nope. Yeah, don't worry about just slowly losing health every time you fuck that up. But eventually we get to the point where all the zombies are just crawling along the ground. That makes it fairly simple to eliminate them. I also make sure to take out the screamer, and that clears the infestation. <coughs> Now it's time to turn my attention back to the player cart. But whenever I try exiting the car, it sticks me outside. And it won't let me sneak in over the top either. I assume it's the zombies inside the building blocking me, so move the car forward in order to let them out. And believe it or not, that actually works out really well. Never question my ability, especially when it comes to cheating this game. Now let's be honest, bladed weapons are certainly not efficient at taking out player carts. But I am trying to max out sword play, and I figured this might help, but to be honest, I don't really know. Oh, the zombies outside. Look at them. Oh, poor little dick. Look at the little guy. Look at the little guy. Can't work his way in. Bless him. After about a full two minutes of fighting, I do manage to complete the phase on my player cart. But unfortunately, I can't complete the second before my sword breaks. So my options are to either spend three hours with a combat knife or three and a half seconds with an automatic machine gun. Rather predictably, I chose the second option. A bloater then pops outside while I'm looting, and somehow a feral glitches through the window. How did you get in? What the fuck? He must have glitched his way through. That's cheating. It most certainly is, and we will not stand for cheaters in this game. After fully looting the place, we can jump in the car and make our way back. And taking out that single player car has cleared two siege sites and two infestations around our home. That certainly wasn't my intention, but fair play to those zombies for walking all of that way. So I get back literally just in the nick of time and unload all of the shit we've looted. But Jamie's training session is not over yet. She still hasn't maxed out her swords play. And while she's still able to walk... <sighs> 
shit. And that's why you should always carry a play cure on you. For the next few minutes, we fight hard. And even though I'm silent, being hand to hand, the situation can quite quickly escalate. Especially when a blood feral decides he wants to get involved. But at that point, I'm no longer staying hand to hand. Adios, you smack headed twat. I mean, the thing is, I've got enough bullets to wipe them all out if I wanted to. And that's exactly what I do. I slaughtered them all like animals. Easy. You just had to open that fucking mouth, didn't you? Spank that ass, bitch. Thanks to Gunslinger, I'm able to kill it. And it drops a lovely surprise for me. Ooh, we got grenade launchers. I really want to test this out. And we have the perfect place to test it. Just a shame the explosion couldn't ignite the bloater cloud. A bloater explodes beneath my feet and another feral has joined the fun. Well, the last thing you'd want right now is the game to glitch and throw you directly into that cloud, right? Bloody hell, would you look at that? That certainly isn't, uh, isn't great. No, it most certainly is not, my friend. I'd be tempted to say that we're almost certainly about to catch blood plague. It's almost as if I'm psychic. And that, my friends, is exactly why you carry multiple play cures on Lethal Zone. I keep battling hard, but unfortunately I'm completely out of bandages and Xanax. So I head back to base to heal. Sort them out a second, son. Right, I'm just gonna grab a melee kit. But unfortunately that's harder than you'd expect. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh my god, I'm getting fragged by my own team. And that's not even the worst of it. Oh my god. Thankfully, the community band together with one glorious goal. To save my fucking ass. But while fighting with my brothers and sisters, a curveball starts that could make things so much harder. High temperature Zeds will give you more plague samples, but at the cost of being twice as infectious. Well, thankfully, it's only affecting one corner of the map. The smart play here is just to avoid that area altogether. See, and that's why you don't have to be quiet in Lethal Zone. Although it does help a little bit. After after a quick heal up, Jamie once again heads on out to complete her training. Well, continue her training. But given how dangerous the area around my base is, things can escalate extremely quickly. Twat! No, get off! Get off! But somehow I managed to break through, and that was a lot closer than I care to admit. And that is why we carry an abundance of play cures in Lethal Zone. But unfortunately, we're not done with the escalation. Even though I do manage to take out the two crackheads trying to get into my rectum. So I start slicing a dicing against a horde that I believe is glitched, giving off proper Pillow Princess vibe. Yeah. And that's when I come across one of these pricks. And I deal with him how I would imagine you would deal with a hippo. Running around in circles till his fat little legs can't keep up. He's also not smart enough to reach me when I'm stood on this car. So you might be wondering, why the bloody hell do you jump from safety? Why the bloody hell did you start slicing and dicing so close to the big brute? Why the bloody hell do you keep putting yourself in these stupid situations? I wish I fucking knew, to be honest with you. But he gets bored and I get back to base. I think just the three infections for Jamie should do for today. So I take over as Gaz, but we get another curveball start to initiate. Some hostile raiders have ransacked my outpost. And just guess where they just so happen to set up base. Smack dab right in the middle of the highly infectious zone. What a bunch of pricks. And look, obviously I could wait the infection zone out, but these bastard raiders are stealing ammo and fuel off me every single day. And I need ammo and fuel to, well, shoot and burn things. So I rock up to their base and get ready to shoot and burn them. Mr. Raider, I have come to Oh my god, there's three of them. I do feel the game has trolled me slightly. I will explain in close commentary. Yeah, so surely the Lone Raider should be like, you know, on his own. And I've never actually had the Lone Raider curveball as a tutorial in this community. I also once mentioned on a developer live stream that the Lone Raider should be a bit harder. Ah, wiker! But as the zombies come, I got a roly-poly out of right, them. Highly infectious zombies. I wonder if those highly infectious zombies are more infectious to the dickheads I'm trying to kill. I'm assuming that is the case as he quickly falls. The one with brains and bronze. All right, guys, don't get too cocky, son. One of the raiders is also reanimated, so I get to kill him all over again. And he actually had some decent stuff on him. Oh, they had a grenade. They had a grenade on him and he didn't think to drop it. Then I go back to science experiments. Right, I'm gonna let this guy bite me. Right, I don't know why I did that. I was already nearly infected. Something, something about lots of play cures on Lethal Zone. It was supposed to be for science, all right? Meanwhile, our psychotic cough syrup addicted knobhead is scheming up a plan. This is Jermaine, and today is the day Jermaine snaps. Here to show Red Talon what you can accomplish? No, thank you, mate. Our little psychopath has bigger things to worry about. Like going to chat to the last medics. They insulted him previously when he gave them a portable generator and all they gave him was a little thank you. But when he gets there, he realizes one of them has been abducted. And if you're gonna murder an entire enclave, there's no point half arsing it. So I agreed to get their surgeon back, but Will's gotta come with me. Go on, let's go get him. Obviously, if, if, if we gotta risk our lives, then you're coming with me. Hostiles on lethal are probably the hardest threat you'll face in this game. So stealth is such an important strategy, which is exactly why I burst through their front fence and shine my headlight 
lights through their front window. I then kick off the assault with some chemical warfare in the shape of a bloater gas grenade. It's so much easier trying to win a war when you don't have to worry about the Geneva Convention. And it's even easier when you're not worried about civilian casualties. Get wrecked, bitch. Also, a 30 round shotgun does a pretty good job of melting hostiles. Speaking of melting, they set this bitch on fire. Although my overexcitable approach has attracted quite a few knobheads to the situation. I even get surprised attacked by a bloater. Like, how the fuck does anyone get surprised attacked by a big fat glowing ball of goo? Anyway, it seems my many war crimes has taken out pretty much this entire enclave. Other than this guy who's called up on the floor crying. Keep well alive, escort Jalen back to the medical base. I can do that. He says that, but something's telling me it's not going to be as easy as he thinks. But then again, he does want the enclave dead. Maybe this is the best way of- Oh, hang on. Nope, he's beating them all off. He manages to get in the car, and I do a cinematic drift around the back of the house. But sick drifts and family won't be enough to save this enclave. But apparently, I did too good of a job saving their lives. They're insanely grateful that I saved their surgeon, and no matter what I do, it won't let me threaten them. I tried calling Katie a fat slag. I told Will I'd shagged his mother, but they just think I'm joking about. Luckily, I'm an out-of-the-box kind of thinker. Instead, I say to Katie, how about you come with me and we'll go on a little adventure? And her having no concept of stranger danger is like, yeah, sure, let's go. Maybe if she sees my psychotic ass in action, she'll finally start hating me and I can threaten the entire enclave. But it turns out the lonely hearts are also allied, and that means I can't threaten them. I take that about as well as you'd expect. I'm an out-of-the-box kind of thinker, what can I say? But not wanting to waste all of my bloater clouds, I decide I'll come back to them later. Instead, I head to the most northern point possible. Previously, our leader Gaz has sided with them over a disagreement with another enclave. But today, Jermaine is here to fuck shit up. This time, he starts by rejecting their cries for help. He then tells them the casserole they cooked is god-awful. Weirdly, they don't appreciate that. Hey, unless you wanna die, you better start running. But that's alright, because I'm armed with Semplock and Zombate. Then, using my own car as a shield for gunfire, I sit back and watch the chaos unfold. This is exactly how you deal with a hostile enclave. Admittedly, it was a hostile enclave that I did of my own doing, but even so. But one of them decides she still wants to have a go. Well, that is until I spray her with buckshot. After that, she decides she's got a better chance with a horde of the undead. Well, 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 but you look at that. They're trying to thick shots at me. But I think you really gotta question their priorities right now. Although, to be fair, this woman does a fantastic job of refusing to die. Honestly, I don't think you understand how hard it was to refuse the temptation of burning this entire hall to the ground. It would have been so insanely satisfying to stick a pipe bomb in the middle of this. To be fair, I'm surprised that the zombies aren't attacking her. I thought she'd have got annihilated by now. Did anyone else know that scent block also affects your followers? Could I be the first to discover that? So two of the three members have now perished thanks to that horde, but the third member is nowhere to be found. That has to be the guy they report missing because as I head inside he spawns outside Don't even think you're coming over here. I'm already here mate what are you gonna do about it also how does he know not to like me I only threatened them like two and a half minutes ago and he wasn't even present I guess news really does travel fast in the zombie apocalypse yeah stay down bitch don't point your gun at me and just like that our third victim of the day becomes zombie grub RIP and KD's still living life completely unfazed by the horde that's behind her so we jump in our car and make our way to our next victim well on this occasion it's not actually an enclave we actually pay a visit to a trumble trader. But Jermaine's plan remains the same. Obviously, he can't threaten her, so firstly, he takes her valuables, then lobs some zombie at her feet. But my scent block is no longer active, so instead, I take refuge on the boot of my car and just wait for the approaching horde. Although, if I'm honest, it's rather underwhelming. Both Alex and Katie fight them off. This is feminism in action. Look, I can help out every now and then, but I just... Yeah, nice one, but you've been extremely helpful there. I'm sure that's not your psychotic brain just trying to be as loud as possible to draw more zombies. This unfortunately means that the zombies have a massive massive hard-on for me, and Alex can safely pick them off. So I try to force her into the action by standing behind her, then going inside and standing between a thin piece of glass. What a foolproof strategy. These can't get through the, the glass because of the metal thing. They all line up, I open and close. But to be honest, all that did is give Alex a chance to show off her zombie survival skills. That's pretty impressive for an NPC. For the second time today, I need a different strategy. Ah, would you look at that? Right on cue. First thing I gotta do is move the impaler, because juggernauts are more anti-car than Oxford Town council. I do a lap around the building to confuse the juggernaut, but Alex just sits behind the safety of her bricks and mortar. But apparently I did too good of a job of distracting the juggernaut, as he's now completely lost interest. So in order to get his attention again, I've got to get uncomfortably close to the big girl. That turns out to be bad news for Katie. Like, really bad news for Katie. Like, imagine the worst day of your life, then imagine a fat man ripping out your throat with his teeth and ripping you in two. Can we get an RIP for Katie in the comment section? Now let's get that juggernaut chat into the 
the Trumbull Trader. But that turns out to be harder than you'd expect. Honestly, these juggernauts got ADHD, Mike. They got the fucking attention span of a fucking fish. But after many, many attempts, I managed to get them both outside and ready to face each other. And, well, yeah, you could probably work out exactly how that one went. We're gonna need another RIP for Alex Carter in the comment section. Rest well, Miss Carter. Rest well indeed. Can we get an RIP, Trumbull Trader? That shit is brutal. Right, anyway, I think it's my turn to get out of here now. But we now have a spot open for Chief Cannon Fodder. But the question is, who should fill that spot? But it's obviously gotta be my allied friends, the last medics, right? I quickly enlist Will as a follower, seeing as I had a pretty sizable horde following me. <laughs> This is Jermaine's world. We're all just living in it. But Will lasts about as long as I would with Margot Robbie. What can I say? She's an incredibly fit lady. And I get out of breath walking up the stairs. She'd kick my ass no problem at all. Alright, well I guess I need some more assistance. Oh wow, yeah, you got some serious troubles here, dude. Oh dude, yeah. We got some really big issues here. So I decide to seal up the back door, but unfortunately I get surprised attacked. I can't believe that guy just let me get bit by a zombie. What a prick. Honest to God, he deserves everything that comes to him. So I run around the side and start shooting my way back in. Also, I could just set the prick on fire. Alright, yes, I may have got singed in the process too. I then run to the safety of a car as I heard the cry of a blood feral. But that blood feral has no interest in the last of the last medics, so I decide to try and force their meeting. I manage to enlist Jalen as a follower just as he gets absolutely annihilated by the feral. So what I do is close the door behind me and go back to standing on car the rooftop. I'm really fucking broom now. I'm I really want to help you, but like, I don't want to roll an ankle jumping off here, you know? I'm sure you'd understand. Fucking hell! Oh, fucking hell. I surely hope they do, my friend. I surely hope they do. <laughs> See what I did there? It's a play on the words fuck in, fuck in, and then fuck in a place. Fuck in. You get it. It's fine. Oh, yeah, look. He looks like he's dead. You always know a joke's gone well when you've got to explain it to the audience. Next, I head to the Lonely Hearts to recruit my next fallen ally. Judy, please come with me. I've spotted our next victim. And on this occasion, I tend to use them before abusing them. Firstly, I buy all of their explosives off them, and then I threaten them with violence. Then they make their biggest mistake and give me 20 seconds to leave. That's enough time for me to give them their mind back. I then use another scent block, which puts me into infected territory. But that's why we always carry play cures. I also make sure to toss my final zombie, and now we get to sit back and watch the chaos unfold. But something tells me that people don't like it when I try blowing up their doorstep. Hey, prick! Don't come at me with a fucking meat cleaver, son. So I put two in his back and plant my last whistle in mine. I then try to take refuge behind this broken car, but it seems these lot are much more eager to get me involved in the fight. But massive respect to Judy for getting her hands dirty. Although you can't keep this woman down forever, and she's very quick to put two rounds into my ass. Oh no! No! Not like this! Jermaine can't go out like this! He's so young! So chaotic. Yeah, so that plan was a bit of an L. They must have some kind of anti zombie strategy. Looks like I'm gonna have to get my hands dirty on this one, boys. But I suppose there's a reason they say the double tap is one of the most important rules of Zombieland. Thankfully, Jermaine can shake this off, but now I've had enough of dicking about. Time to go back to using the fucking big guns. Metaphorically speaking, of course, because we're technically using chemical warfare. But this bitch just does not want to leave me alone. Honestly, like, who does this woman think I fucking am? I'm hardly Justin Bieber like. Hilariously, then her friend tries taking a bullet for her. Honestly, that fair has to be one of the funniest things I've seen in this game. I tell you what, have another gas bomb, you bitches. I can then finally drop this dude, then me and Judy team up to finally get him to stop moving. But honestly, this last woman takes a serious fucking beating. I think she actually might be the final boss of the zombie apocalypse, which makes it a real shame that I've had to do her like this. In an alternative timeline, she could have become a great member of the Lizard Gang. It's a shame Jermaine's lust for blood had to go on like this. Now finally thinking it's time to wrap things up, I start to make my way back to Judy's community. But when driving past it, this infestation, it seems there's people that need my assistance. And I have a spare molly or two, so I decide to help them out. But unfortunately, I can't risk much more, especially when I'm in this condition. Wait, what are you doing? No, stop that. Stop. Stop it. Stop panning upwards. Okay, fine. I start the send block active. But what can I say? Sometimes you've just got to abandon people in cold blood. Although it does see me driving away has cleared out the infestation. But all i got to do is talk to them. I might as well. They both seem in terrible conditions, but want to continue clearing out infestations and ask if I want to come along with them. So I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Jimmy now has an army of three with him. Technically, I'm supposed to head to the Tartar Mart to clear out another infestation. But then maybe our new friends will abandon me. But that can't be allowed to happen. Firstly, I head to my outpost, then heal myself with coffee and heroin. And seeing as we now have the best part of a five-a-side team, I want to really put them to test to see what they can do. So I take them all to fight this play card. But before we get to the nitty-gritty, I pop my final scent block. I'm here to test the team's ability to kill zombies, not the zombies' ability to kill me. I get the first phase complete, but rather predictable. I get stuck in the bathroom and take big damage. But once out, I decide to thin out the hordes surrounding the play card. I'll just help thin out the hordes, you know? And then I go back in there. Yes, look, I'm also helping out my teammates. In 
fact, one of them helped me batter the heart, and we get the second phase over incredibly quickly. This must be what teamwork feels like, and once it's finished spewing its gases, it's incredibly easy to finish it all off. Thank you very much, team, let's get the fuck on out of here. And as a reward, I decide to clear the infestation at the Tartan Mart. And after the bloater pops, that turns out to be incredibly easy. Some might say barely an inconvenience. And even though they're basically hanging on for dear life, they just can't help but want more and more. But at that point, we get another enclave spawning. And it's one of those enclaves that just want hand-me-downs. And just in case you haven't worked it out yet, we only have one way of dealing with them. Firstly, I tell them there ain't a fucking chance they're getting any materials off me. I then tell them their breath stinks. And before I leave, drop a firecracker and close the door behind me. But it seems this enclave doesn't even have guns. Which means I can stand on my car and be com- Oh, alright, okay, maybe not completely safe. I decide to be one of those insufferable twats who plant a firework in the middle of the day. And that actually worked out quite well as it attracts a blood feral. Although he doesn't last as long as I'd like, and ends up getting overly excited in the boot of my car. Oh, well, there's someone there who looks like he was human at some point. Yeah, that's kind of how zombies work, mate. They were all human at some point, including the juggernauts. At that point, I'm starting to realise that my team of four is looking a bit light. In fact, it seems I've only got one left standing. Well, it looks like I better get started in thinning out these pricks. My best bet is the usual strategy of just burning everything that moves. And I'm pretty certain at this point all of my friends are dead. Oh yeah, there's one right now taking a nibble of me. But that's alright, we've only got one more hostile left. Firstly, I try feeding Sleeping Beauty to these armoured zombies, but that just causes her to wake from her slumber. So instead, I just settle with shooting her in the back of the face. I think we can call that a good day's work. Good job. Yeah, so Jermaine makes his way back to the container fort. Very satisfied with the chaos he's caused today, but we can't help but weep for his fallen comrades. That team of four could have toppled governments, and we didn't even have a team name. Jermaine parks up and unloads his spoils of war, and he can't wait to tell our leader Gaz about what he's been up to. But Gaz is no warlord. Gaz had worked incredibly hard to make allies in this town, and Jermaine ruined all that hard work in less than a day. It's actually really impressive when you think about it. But frankly, Gaz does not see the light side of mass murder, which neither should anyone if we're being honest. So Gaz drives him out to a nice secluded place with a, just the one witness, I guess. Gaz tells Jermaine his psychotic ways must come to an end, and he had no right to murder basically the entire map. He takes out his pistol, tells Jermaine to look away, and puts one in the back of his head. Rest well, you psychotic bastard. Rest well. We have five play cards remaining on this lethal zone map, and I'm pretty certain they're all awake, as we have a high chance of a siege. Let's go, Robert. Well, he's a frickin' moron, because we're actually playing as Hooch. And Hooch is tasked with taking down the remaining five play cards, but he also wants to find the legendary police chief Jackson while he's out in the field. Man, it's hard to believe that Robert's the last of the alcoholics. Robert was never a member of the alcoholics, and you're playing as Hooch, you frickin' moron. You sure you're not the one with the alcohol problem? Anyway, Hooch arrives at police Jackson's house, and Hooch becomes psychic. Damn it. Chief Jackson's place looks abandoned. I mean, how the hell would you know that? You haven't even walked in there yet, you knob. As a copper, I'm pretty sure Chief Jackson would have been really proud of my illegal enter and search. Even if I only found road flares, a flashbang, and a proper shite baton. I never saw Chief Jackson without this baton. If it's here, I don't think he made it. Looks like we need RIPs for Chief Jackson in the comment section, then. I haven't been this disappointed with a loot drop since I stamped on that hedgehog and didn't even get any gold rings. So I dropped that piece of shit baton and lobbed the flashbang. Hey, I'm only keeping Keeping the flares for like just in case I come across some bloater grenades because I've got none left. So we get to our first play cart, which is in this little warehouse. I park up and throw a flare in the hope it distracts some of the hordes. Then it's time to start battering. Okay, yeah, also just realized got a baseball bat equipped. Not a heavy weapon, not a great look. Thankfully, Hooch is one athletic dude. You'd think with him being an alcoholic that cardio is the last thing on his mind. But how else are you gonna be able to run away from your demons if you're not shit hot on cardiovascular? Hooch repeatedly dodges through the hordes just to get a couple of Hits on it with his spiky baseball bat. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. I can't believe we haven't even been hit yet. Well, nice one, Dick. Eddie, you've almost certainly jinxed us now. I leg it back outside. Stay in it. <laughs> you silly fuckers. Oh, look, bloater. And the flare is working. Okay, bloater, come with me. So I charge in, hoping that the bloater follows me. But he can't hold his nerve and explodes on first entry. Like the video, if you can relate to that bloater. That is bad news. So I burn up the cloud so I don't accidentally run into it. Then start popping headshots for fun. I just can't believe I haven't even been hit yet. I might be the greatest player ever. I can then finally get the first phase off with the baseball bat and take refuge on my car while shit calms down for five. And after we regain composure, we go back in. Okay, right, there's the feral. There's a feral, you little shit. And the best way to defeat this feral is to lead it out into the open. No close quarters combat for me, thank you very much. Yeah, the armor's gone now. 
Adios, bitch. And thankfully, that fight was a stroke of genius. The unsuppressed gunfire took all the hordes outside, and I can get several good hits uninterrupted on the play cart. When the hordes arrive, I retreat and run around the side. And I repeat that tactic until the play cart finally falls. Well, hey, we got it done. Not ideal to do with a baseball bat, I'll be honest with you. And look at that. Just like that, we've basically eliminated our entire infestation problem. What a legend. All right, but enough self-gratification, all right? What a cocky prick. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? Just let me open it, you bitch! Right, everyone outside. I'm taking care of this the old-fucking fashion way. You'll be surprised to learn the old-fashioned way doesn't include extreme heat. And that's mainly because I've wasted all of my bloody Molotovs. I run out of ammo and turn my attentions to a screamer. But before I can deliver the final blow, the crowd disrupts me, and the little shit lives to fight another day. So I go in for a second attempt, but the same thing happens again. And each time, my plague meter climbs a little higher. Although, looking back, the knife was definitely in the screamer's skull. Just because he didn't do that weird twisty neck thing doesn't mean he should live. Also, all of this gunfire is definitely louder than what the screamer would have been. And it's not the only time that shit happens. Why do you keep doing that? I'm trying to easy kill zombies. Ah, shit, a feral. Not just one feral, three of the fuckers. Well, I do know exactly how to deal with these. I get into my car like a scary little bitch and await to be rear-ended. That's one feral down. Meanwhile, the second thinks he's a fucking Beyblade. Oh, look at that, they're getting smarter. They're just waiting inside. All right, maybe not. I have to be smarter to draw the last out. And everyone knows ferals love a cheeky J-turn. Easy as can be. But there's still a horde between me and my loot. But there's a reason they call me the zombie slaying John Wick. I mean, should technically be running right now. You are a bitch. That is utterly ridiculous. Sounds like a skill issue to me, but I'll be honest with you. But hey, that's why we always carry multiple play cures. I can then finally loot the play cart for the most average loot drop I've ever seen. I then decide to take a trip back to base as Robert has some curveball intel. Robert wants a chat, we'll go have a chat. Don't worry about the waste of fuel that I'll have to go through, but yeah, sure, Robert, let's go have a chat. That's a good point, actually. Why couldn't Robert just radio me? Maybe he's secretly Amish. No! You bastard! Are you kidding me? I am without a doubt calling bullshit on that one. Well, it looks like we're swapping. Hooch really is not prepared for this. Sleeping bloaters might actually be my greatest nemesis. And to think I thought it was just my own incompetency. So I get back to base, chat to Robert, and put Hooch in the infirmary. The question is, who do I take over as? You already know exactly who we're taking over as. Let's smash some shit up, Gaz. The curveball Robert told me about was thick-skinned, but it's only affecting a small portion of the map, and we have no reason to go anywhere near it. I don't know why, but I always end up taking out play carts in the night, which is probably the least advisable thing to do. My next target is hiding out in a swine and bovine, and after some strategic positioning, I can run in, swing in. And this time I actually remembered to bring a heavy weapon, but the hordes are so thick I don't get a chance to swing at it. And as you can see, before I've even set off a shot, the hordes can grow very quickly, so I do my best to try and draw them all out of the building. This is the point where most people would run and attack a different heart, but not me, because I'm a freaking moron. Now I actually finally get to hit the fucker, and I can finally get the first phase done. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Okay, there is a feral. There is a feral. I try roly polying my way out of danger and slowing him down with a molly. Okay, I'm on fire. I'm not fine. I try to draw the feral out into the open. And he's a dull motherfucker and easily falls for my bait. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah, take that, bitch. Then with how much chaos we've had already, I decide to take down the second phase from the roof of my car. But when I tried to get back inside, guess what turns up? There he is. I thought I heard you, you fucker. But with a mixture of gunslinger and excellent reflexes, the crackhead has his face split open in no time at all. But after all that commotion, there's still half a dozen zombies or so hanging out in the building. So when in doubt, set them on fire and get the fuck out. But for once, that doesn't exactly have the desired effect. Why are they all just waiting in there? Can't you all just chase me for once in your life? They're just hanging around a heart. But nothing will stop me from getting that win. Two more hits and my victory is claimed. Still sticking to my greedy bastard ways, I want to loot that heart before I leave the area. Look, they're confused. They don't know what's going on. I have out- Oh my god, Jesus Christ, no I did not outsmart anything. Oh, I, 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 I headshot him from the roof of my car, then run in to claim my loot. And this time he was actually pretty decent. If I had had some explosives, that would have been a top tier heart. The third play cart is in an auto shop. And for once, I don't have 75,000 zombies on my ass. So after a wee bit of cleanup, I get the first phase sorted before a single zombie enters the building. I then immediately go full auto to get the second phase. Although I then become infected as I try to escape an approaching zombie. But that's why we always carry multiple play cures. Ah, look at that. Got a paracetamol always sound, but absolutely sound. Although my gun is slightly yellow. And as I jump off my car, guess what turns up? Oh, for fuck's sake. Also, I'm calling bullshit on that tackle, but I force the feral to headbutt my spiky cheeks, then destroy the fucker with my sledgehammer. We got quite a few zombies coming in, but I kind of need the loot. Oh, great. Another feral. No, no. Not just the one. But I once again take a tackle that defies the laws of physics. Oh my god. Not gas. Not gas. Not gas. Somehow I managed to beat my way out. Jesus Christ. How did I get plague already? That is why we always carry plenty of plague cures, Chad. I 
deal with both of the ferals, then take the hordes for a little walk. And that gives me the time I need to slip around the back and collect again some very average loot. I store the guns in the boot, refuel and head north. There's two play carts remaining and I find the first in this house. But as there's a horde and jug nearby, I decide it would be best to look for the other heart first. And I find it in a warehouse right next to an infestation. So neither heart is in an ideal position, but at least I can take out the ferals from this infestation with the impaler. I again do a cheeky bit of strategic parking and run head first into danger. Not that you can see anything that's going on, as nighttime in this game is darker than the boys group chat. But a couple of heavy hits gets the first phase sorted. I then temporarily retreat to allow the gases to dissipate before going back in and getting a couple more heavy hits in. I complete the phase and try to finish it from the roof of my car. But that's when disaster strikes. Damn it! Oh great. Oh wait, hang on. Okay, clear! Yes! Gaz is a beast! And from there we can finish off the play cart. And we just got one more heart remaining. And for now at least it seems the juggernaut that was here earlier has wandered off. We haven't got the bullets, we haven't got the uh, explosives, but we do have a can-do attitude. That's all you need really. Just a can-do attitude. Great life advice that. Things get off to a great start as the hordes watch me batter the heart from the doorway. And that's the first phase dealt with. Nope, 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 nope. Jesus Christ. What is it with these bathrooms? I'm always getting stuck in them. I run around the side and in through the back door. Damn it. Why is it fucking zombies everywhere? Almost as if this is lethal zone or something. And the second phase is over pretty quickly. Yes, look, I got out the bathroom without taking additional damage. It's fair to say things are finally starting to lock up. Uh oh. But he breaking again? That was so quick. How did that happen? That was at like less than 20 bullets. I take the fight to the open road to clear the building of zombies. Now we're going in for the final time chat. One last time. Oi, dickheads. Why are they all going inside for? Did I just hear a feral? Oh, God, Jesus Christ. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Please kill yourself on my bum, please. Thank you very much. But suddenly my car bursts into flames. But I have no idea how as I should be completely immune right now. I managed to escape even with the feral block in my exit. Then I come up with a genius plan. Need to keep all the zombies near the car. It might help. And by help I mean clear a large portion of the horde. There we go. Right, that might have helped clear some of them. Didn't do anything for the feral. I take the fight to the feral and we have a great duel. But disaster is never too far away. Wait. What's going on? Are you kidding me? What time to fucking crash? Well, this is going to be interesting. I wonder how I'm going to spawn in. Am I going to be surrounded by a feral? That massive horde? The respawn was very interesting. This kind of feels like cheating a bit. Because there's not a single zombie around. My car's in a completely different place. Although, admittedly, it is still destroyed. I take this quiet minute to swap my gun from the boot. I then run in, hit it once, and it phases. Wait, I'm pretty sure that's added an extra phase on it. Okay, great. So the crash did really do me damage. Also, very close to plague again. And the feral's still here. And to add insult to the injury, I can also hear the roar of a juggernaut. Well, at least I can deal with a feral easy enough. I then rather recklessly spray the remainder of my ammo into the building blind. That was to try and thin out the horde inside, but as you can see, it didn't work. I get yet another phase off with the heavy weapon, so I'm assuming the crash completely reset the heart. I run outside and wait for the gases to dissipate, then finally drop it. And still wanting to loot it, I attempt to clear the horde with my pistol. And I'm no mathematician, but 11 bullets doesn't go into 300,000 zombies. So now it's time to run like fuck. The car's destroyed. Hope is not lost. You see, the second to last heart was in an auto shop, and that's a guaranteed repair kit as long as I can get there. But a crowd seems to be following me, so I decide to try and fight them. Fuck, no, no, that's two ferals. And uh, no, no, it's free. Obviously, it's free because ferals don't hunt in packs of two, do they? So it takes three shots to kill, and I have 20 bullets. Thankfully, I remembered to pick it up before I abandoned my car. I decide it's too risky to try and headshot them from the car, especially with their heads clipping through a solid object. Plus, I've got gunslinger, so I should be able to handle this out in the open. Assuming I have the right weapon equipped, of course. Oh crap! Oh crap! Oh no! I forgot I had the wrong gun equipped. That is an issue. Let's just pop this cure. But after that, I'll only have one remaining. Okay, we go again. Oh, fuck off, man. Why is he not listening to my input? Yes, this, you know, what's the saying about a bad workman blaming his tools? Get away, get away. I really wish I had a molly. Jesus Christ, those fuckers sounded like an F1 car. Thankfully, Gaz is one agile boy. Okay, right. Uh, new plan. We are getting ridiculously low on stamina. Climb, climb, climb for the love of God. I don't think that was a terrible idea. Although, we're now five bullets left. Right, we got one, we got one, we got one. And without the head clipping into a car, I'm able to take out the second. But I've only got seven bullets remaining. Well, it's a bloody good thing I only need one to take out the final crackhead. But all of that commotion has attracted a sizable horde. And I need plenty of time to search that auto shop. I need to lose that horde. And the infestation across the road could really come in handy. I'm pretty sure right now, all I've done is just drawn more attention to myself and created the horde bigger. Great. But it actually worked out exactly how I first intended. That screamer drew the horde straight into the petrol station. That means I can double back around the side and find the toolkit with no issue. 
Right, okay. Well, now we're gonna have to rush. Especially as I only find a gas can in the first container. Thankfully, I get the toolkit in the second container. And now it's time to run. But I get distracted by a tall ladder. I don't know why it is, but I see a ladder. I gotta climb it. That turned out to be a very bad decision. Great, I just heard another feral. But that's not even our biggest problem. Our impaler we need to repair is surrounded by two hordes. And one of those hordes includes a juggernaut. So I've come up with a plan. But before I get to that, I have another crackhead I need to deal with. And remember, I've only got three bullets. Okay, yep, we've just... I just wasted my last one. That's it. Gaz is dead. Ah, he of little faith. His armor is gone and I still have a sledgehammer. Assuming, of course, I don't run out of stamina. Oh, crap. Yes, you do need a breather. I haven't got a car. No. Gaz, not like this. Not like this, Gaz. Get the ladder, Gaz. Get to a car. Get to anything. I decide to climb on the bus knowing full well the feral can follow me. But by the time he climbs up, my stamina is fully regenerated and I can beat yet another crackhead with my hammer. Thankfully, that stuns him and I can perform an execution. Now my plan for getting home. I noticed a ranger SUV on the map, and I plan on using its silence to lure away the hordes from my impaler. First I refill it with the gas I found in the auto shop, and then we head over there. Although gratefully the juggernaut seemed to wandered off. I also definitely over exaggerated the size of this horde. Don't blame me, blame the map icons. If anything I've probably just made a bigger issue for myself, driving over here with the sirens blaring. I'd say that was definitely the case as nearby there's a horde with two screamers and yet another feral. Nope, 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 there we go. But I'm definitely gonna need to take it out before I can repair my impaler. And remember, I've got no bullets, so vehicular manslaughter is the only way that's happening. I desperately try to reverse over it, but without my spike Yuria end, he's immune to my attacks. He then jumps onto my bonnet, and it's basically goodnight SUV from here. I hold my nerve and get up to maximum speed before I jump out. I'm hoping the car will explode and kill him, but I'm never that lucky. The car explodes with the feral nowhere near it. And remember, I've still got no bullets. I only see one possible out here, and that's hoping he can kill himself on the impaler, which gratefully he does. But that doesn't mean this story gets a happy ending. I have to beat off another horde with a sledgehammer. Not an easy thing to do if you catch my drift. And once the last is dead, I try to fix up the impaler. But with it wedged against the wall, I can't get a hitbox to fix it. And I didn't even park it here. The game put it here after the crash. I reckon the game believes me and the impaler are an unstoppable force. Therefore, it needed to nerf us. So I fix up the Ranger SUV and make our way home. The cult formed over a year ago. And in that time, 15 members have become zombie grub. They've also claimed the lives of 86 hostiles. But today is the day the lizard gang ends. The blood plague has been defeated. And for now, everything is looking good for the lizard gang cult. The blood plague may be gone, but this town is still a shithole. I got some ideas to fix that. Well, guys, I'm sure you do have some ideas to fix that, but you need to be, like, sorted out, son. So, yeah, we're off. If you couldn't understand that Winglish, allow me to translate it for you. Gaz has taken an absolute beating and needs to take a nap in the infirmary. So in the meantime, Jamie has offered to open up the welcome wagon. The cult has learned that having allies in the apocalypse is actually beneficial. And seeing as they all mysteriously vanished a little while ago, we have to build some new connections. Looking for Dennis, with a single N. It turns out these guys aren't new connections, they're just connections that may have missed Jermaine's hit list. Introduce yourself to Greg, the leader of the Grocery Raiders. <laughs> Imagine naming yourselves the Grocery Raiders. Look out Asda, Greg has got you on his hit list. Although they can't be great raiders as they've set themselves up in a church. And I'm pretty sure the 11th command Commandment is something like thou shall not raid thy carrots. So I try to introduce myself to the leader Greg who comes out to meet me. But after seeing Jamie's a woman, he runs away scared. A very anxiety ridden there. Eh? So I chase him into the church, but he's determined not to speak. Look, he's running away from me. Why does he not want to chat? I eventually wear him down and welcome him to the neighborhood. I appreciate it. Just don't go raiding as the you little shit, alright? After that I get a radio message from one of our friends asking if they could borrow some petrol. And I know exactly where to find some. Literally the last player cart we took down. <laughs> Surprise dropkick, motherfucker. I then head to the Lonely Hearts and give them their fuel. At this point, Gaz checks himself out of the infirmary and has to chat to some of our peeps about our success in taking down the Blood Plague. He also continues his quest in creating more allies by going to help out some bloke at the old stinky house. But my loud arrival has attracted knobheads. My incredible aim takes out the Blood Feral and part of the fence behind it. But that's not the only little shit that wants to have a go. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. This is how quick things can escalate, even when all of the play cards are dead. So when in doubt, it's time to light everyone on fire. And then I accidentally set myself on fire. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Having the same button map to both heal and destroy is like playing a massive game of Russian roulette. Especially in a game with permadeath. And we know all too well about permadeath. Also, the stranger I was trying to help has come outside to help with the crowds. Hey Rob, how's it going? Rob, you don't want to chat? 
I understand the social anxiety. It's it's it can be crippling at times. Eventually, he pulls himself together and he wants help checking out his old home. Basically, he left a ceremonial bayonet, whatever the fuck that is, and he wants a hand retrieving it. But why the hell could he not do this on his own? Oh right, okay, yeah, I can see why. Social anxiety once again rears its ugly head. He simply couldn't be dealing with this many people and needed his hand holding from a complete stranger. Are these your former friends, mate? Did you lock them in the garage? Kind of fucked up if you did. Just saying. So I clear the remaining horde and find the guy's bayonet, and it's just the bloody sword. However, it seems Rob is having another anxiety episode, and he's just refusing to talk to me. So I do what any good friend would do in this situation: leave him for the blood ferals. And it's a good thing we do because Gaz's sheriff duties are calling. Macca from the Lonely Hearts is worried about another enclave because he hasn't heard of them for a little while. But before we do, I want to see if they've got anything valuable in this supply locker. If you heard nasty rumors about me, so everything's more expensive. But they're perfectly happy to follow me. Ah, yes, I forgot to mention. We also have the vicious rumors curveball active, which isn't exactly inaccurate given what Jermaine did like a few days ago. So we head over to the barn of the guys, which we literally visited this morning. Shit, they're fucking Zed. To be honest, mate, it's a bit tactically inept, don't you think, to be like setting up in a barn with a massive door like this? It's, it's basically outdoors. This is basically camping. Let me look around and find out. Watch my back, okay? Yeah, I'll just search corpses, why not? But all I find on the dead dudes is a good stash of pharmaceuticals. Don't worry, they certainly will not be going to waste. But it actually wasn't the corpses I had to search at all. Tattered piece of paper shows some geographic coordinates labelled Rally Point. I don't know what kind of baddies are invading my town, but they have to be as thick as pig shit to leave a map back to the secret base at the scene of their crimes. But as the apocalypse's greatest detective, Gaz has to go and investigate. The coordinates lead us to this warehouse, but it's completely empty, not even a zombie in sight. So I look around the place for five and find myself a toolkit and a tattered piece of paper. This tattered note shows three locations labelled potential targets. I show Macca the note and one of the coordinates leads directly to his base. Raiders are attacking our home! Jesus Christ, love, talk about cinematic timing, we'll be there right now. And with the lives of my allies on the line, we'll do anything to get there in order to save them. Oh, that was pretty sick. Not, uh, you know, efficient for the situation at hand, but it looked pretty cool. So we arrive back at the Lonely Hearts, and I realise the enclave attacking them is called the Mad Bastards. Well, no one's as mad or as bastardly as the Lizard Gang, so let's get shit sorted. I obviously start with a molly through the window, because who gives a shit about collateral damage? Oh, great. I think our friend is dead. I put five rounds into this hostile head, then put down the reanimated corpse of Macca's mate. Ignore the singe marks, they were already there when I got you. And with the hostiles dead, I've now got to search their corpses for clues. Honestly, this is the most Scooby-Doo I felt since I was a child. Our scouts located a town with no plague zombies and want to move in. Search the town for potential home sites, find out who lives there and what the defences are like. If they're vulnerable, demand tribute. You know what to do if they refuse. I remember what happens if you disappoint the boss. Don't be one of those people. Macca's like, wow, that was really rough. I can't believe all of my friends are dead. And I'm like, I I know that's rough, but I guess I'll see you later. After that, I head to my outpost on the edge of town and swap to Hooch to give Gaz five to rest. Hooch then heads back to speak to Rob, the social anxiety survivor that Gaz abandoned earlier. And thankfully, he's got over his social anxiety and I can give him his ceremonial bayonet. Apparently, Rob didn't like Gaz, but he was happy to speak to Hooch, so fair play. Even though Gaz had actually left the bayonet on the floor behind him. After that, Hooch gets home and collects a rucksack of ammo, as Gaz still wants the gang to focus on building allies. Although on the way to drop off the supplies to Lindsay, Hooch runs into an Echo Trader, and thinking it might come in handy, he picks up some bloater gas, some zombie, and some Z-Drenalin. After that, he drops off the ammo, but it seems we still have some vicious rumours circulating about our cult. So Hooch carries on his diplomatic mission by helping out Greg at the Grocery Raiders. And I'm not sure what he wants, but that title doesn't fill me with joy. It turns out Greggy Boy wants to loot a nearby restaurant, but it's full of zombies. And he's asking if I'd help him out. Obviously, I'm happy to do so, so together we head over there. I've kind of got to go as as the crow flies because I'm low on fuel and I don't want to not make it. Very embarrassing in front of my new friend. And for once, my overzealous approach has come in clutch as my loud engine draws all of the zombies out of the restaurant and I complete the mission. At that point, Greg then fucks off into the darkness and leaves me to deal with the surrounding zombies. And unless he's secretly the Flash or something, there's no way in hell he looted that restaurant. So I've basically driven him to the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night so he can walk back through lethal zone. Terrible survival instincts but yeah sure whatever son. Also a juggernaut has arrived and Hooch is keen to show off his fighting skills. He dodges the beast's first charge and moves in for a back shot like his name is Johnny Sins. Oh shit that took big hits. So he whips out his stormbreaker and completely melts the fat bastard. That unsuppressed gunfire attracts a couple of friends but you already know exactly how I deal with them. Burn baby burn. It doesn't quite finish them all off but it gives me enough room to get back 
to my car and skedaddle. I can then refuel and repair at my outpost, and just as I'm about to leave, I get a message over the radio. My extremely violent friends and I are coming to your town. Which will soon be our town. Yeah, I'm not taking that kind of threat from a twat named Bert. I'm sorry, I can't take you seriously, mate. So I swap back to Gaz as it's time to test people's loyalty. But I might need some backup, so Hooch is coming along with me. And with the two of us together, nothing can go wrong. Firstly, we check in on the weathered hands, and I may have accidentally attracted a horde on my arrival. Thankfully, fire is my ally. Get fucked, you big bitch. There's also a second feral I've got to deal with, but he doesn't know who to munch on, and Gunslinger comes in clutch. I then leave Hooch to deal with the horde while I go in and chat to the boys. Kathleen's like, oh my god, they're gonna fuck us up. And I'm like, fucking chill out, love. If you stick with me, you'll be alright. Totally on board with that. It also seems Hooch hasn't done a very good job of keeping the horde off us, so I've got to show off my leadership skills by setting everyone on fire. What can I say? Some people become leaders because they're power hungry. But not me, I become a leader because it's in my blood. After that, me and Hoochie boy head over to the Lonely Hearts, but when we arrive, I suspect that we're too late. Oh my god. Oh yeah, the body's more his shirt, yeah. Sorry, yeah, that's my bad. Right, where's my team? So I tell Macro if he fights with me, he'll live. How could I possibly say no to that? Also, dude, like, maybe clean up the corpses from your living room. People are gonna start thinking. We've then got one more enclave we've gotta check up on. An enclave I've never met before. The Colony of Survivors. So you can probably work out exactly how this is gonna go. Hello, Beto. Don't be stupid, you can't stop the heart eaters. If you're smart like us, you'll start taking orders from them. Well, I'm sorry, Beto, but we're not massive pussies. And then they just start laughing in my face. That's obviously not not a great sign, but if they're willing to fight me, then why the fuck are they not willing to fight the new Norbids? I can assure you, Beto, I'm much more crazy than any mad bastard that's coming into this town. Who else is gonna set themselves and their teammates on fire? Adios, Beto, you little bitch. I've also taken some severe hits there. But thanks to the pharmaceuticals I took off that corpse earlier, I'm good to go. While Hooch deals with one of the traitors, I deal with the other one. Have that, you prick. But the other guy abandoned the fight with Hooch to come and save his friend. However, that turns out not to be too great for his longevity. Hooch then batters him on the floor with a baseball bat, and I shoot him in the back of the head as he tries to run away. Thank fuck there's no one to prosecute you for war crimes during the zombie apocalypse. Continuing our quest to create more allies for the up and coming war, Gaz and Hooch respond to a radio call. Apparently some hostile knobheads have murdered all of Cameron's friends, and she needs our hand seeking vengeance. And I can never say no to a cheeky bit of gun violence. So the three of us head over to the devoted defenders. You're locked and loaded, cause we got a juggernaut. Oh, Cameron, we're not dealing with a juggernaut, my love. But what we will do is deal with a cheeky pack of blood ferals. And when I say deal, what I actually mean is lead directly back to the hostiles. And that works out very well at first. The first feral completely ignores me and runs straight through the window. However, the second sweeps Cameron straight off her feet, but not in the way that she'd enjoy. The third then tries to take out my agile ass, but there's no way in hell Gaz is being taken down by a fucking crackhead. With their attention now on us, we have no choice but to take the remaining ferals out. Then with both Hooch and Cameron battering away at a down hostile, I set everyone on fire. But I promised this time he was strategic, there were zombies everywhere man. Then with only one hostile remaining and him taking a nap in the middle of a zombie field, I can very quickly finish him off. She's then like, I think we're done here, shall we go but? Um, I don't think we are. Something tells me that we're not quite done yet. Thankfully fire is very efficient at dispatching the undead. After that she's like, cheers boys, couldn't have done it without you. Here you go, share this advanced suppressor. Not that I ever bother with suppressors, cause in my opinion they're fucking useless. And the Comment section definitely never overreact whenever those words leave my mouth. Gaz and Hooch get back to base, but they're not there long. You see, the weathered hands have been attacked by the mad bastards, and we've only got like 12 minutes to go and save their lives. So we race over there as fast as we can, and as soon as the door opens, I just start blasting. Open up! Oh, Hooch, you've got in the way. Go on, there you go, that'll do. The fire did an exceptional job of downing them, and with them all immobilized, I can go in and finish the job with an excessive amount of headshots. Sheriff, please refrain from self congratulation. We are most certainly not going anywhere. How did you find out I killed your men so quick? God, this guy must work for Google. I then search all of the bodies and sell all of their shit to the weathered hands. Call it a bonus. The grocery raiders then want my help with something else. As if I'm not busy enough, Greg, can't you see I'm in the middle of fighting a fucking war? You can go and find your own fucking cleaver. So I again head home because it's time to strategize. The mad bastards will be back and I need to finish them once and for all. Our scouts have found out exactly where they're hiding and all of our hard work building allies has finally paid off as the weathered hands want to help us. But life is very rarely that simple. Juggernaut! 
We are fucked! Oh crap. I only come over you to like pick up a gift. Fuck's sake, get up your pussy. And stop faking sickness, will you? Alright, who you sort out that jug, alright? That's what we like to see. That's our proper leader, that is. Whoever hands gift me some napalm grenades. And I'm not saying I'm not grateful because I am. Fire is my favourite thing and napalm is a shit ton of fire. But I can't help but feel that four napalm grenades isn't a great gift for, you know, saving someone's life. And I'm literally about to go save the entire town from a vicious warlord. Yes, I know, I see the fucking irony. You'd have thought that they'd have offered to help out or something, so I get to their hideout to try and scope them out, but unfortunately it appears that they've spotted us, so it's time to test out some strategy. I start by lobbing zombie at the door, and then through the shot out window, but that doesn't go too well as it attracts a blood feral, and obviously it's more interested in me than the occupying warlords, and I'm using me very loosely there, as it's actually extremely interested in Hooch, so I make sure to kill the feral before Hooch catches blood plague. Unfortunately my zombie plan isn't working too well as we have a curveball active that is making zombies less threatening. Talk about time in, am I right? But the napalm grenades do a great job of keeping them all in the building. And with Chief Warlord on the roof, I throw two bloater grenades. Although I'll be honest, I don't know if that actually did anything. Hooch, you fight on the ground. I'm taken to the skies. Thankfully, there's a perfectly placed billboard nearby. And you know I love climbing a ladder. And I didn't bring Eagle Eye's rifle all this way for it to sit in my backpack. And Bert, I've realised, at the end of the day, only one of us need to die. Ah, shit. Sorry, that wasn't Bert. There we go. And with Bert dead, the rest of his men surrender. And that is the end of our hero's journey. It's time for the Lizard Gang to settle down and enjoy retirement. They've slayed their way through four different difficulties and four different towns. But why continue the fight when you're safe and sound? Cascade Hills is now their home. And the road to get you was long, treacherous, and cost 15 cultists their lives. This is for Rags, Leticia, Tareen, Grace, Erica, Ulysses, Daquan, Jaquan, Laurel, Waldrum, Terry, Loren, Laser, Shelley, and finally, Jermaine. Let me know who your favourite cultist was in the comment section, and don't worry, there'll still be plenty of State of Decay content coming in the future. But for now, at least, that is the Lizard Gang Cult. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.